button is always make sure the phone is on silent. Always on silent. Always. always. Depending on where you are. You know how be these days. Yeah. No recording. Bro, the worst is when your phone goes off during. Like I, I haven't done it in a while, but your phone go off during Juman. You're like, bruh. Sure, mm, man. Me. <laughs> With people these days, they check an email during Juma. Bro, I, so Putting I together full blown PowerPoint presentations. Bro, I, did I tell you about the one time I went mm, to? Um, I went to Juma. Yeah, yeah, I told you that. That Juma was crazy. So I went to Juma out in, uh, ooh, so out in Sterling. Yeah. Right, and this dude at first I thought he was like putting his phone silent, whatever. The mm-hmm. cabal's going, he's like, Okay, let me turn. Like, oh, I got a text real quick. So he checks the joint and then he goes on his email. This man is chucking, he was checking junk email. He wasn't, even, I was like, Bro, you, you are, are, you are, you are, you are ballsy. <laughs> you're ballsy, my friend. He's tripping. It's not the he's like, No one's watching time. himself a guy. It's not the best use of his time right now. You feel me? Yeah, exactly. But uh, was it somebody who was it, younger or older? Uh, he looked like he was a, my age, maybe older. Okay, okay, we're at okay. that weird. We're at that weird age where you can't really tell how old anybody is. I know, right? I, people think I'm still in college, and I love it. <laughs> I'm like, yo, even I, with the facial hair, they get the misconception. Even with the facial hair and the lack of hair on top, like they're like, oh, you still look pretty young. I'm like, thank you. Uh, <sighs> I was really insecure about my hair. Hey, well, now at first people used to kind of uh, rate that by if I go to the store and you know you get quote unquote just like ask like how old you are you know like oh yeah it makes me feel young but now it's like it's all over the place you know some yeah. people are young some people are old some people look old but they're young some people are yeah. young but actually yeah pretty old you yeah. feel me so but one thing i'm i'm happy about is that you know i said black don't crack so i think yeah <laughs> <laughs> well look speaking of young mm. we need to start off the young and muslim podcast you ready for this let's get it young brother well, you know what it is bro you already know how we do hey. it hit them with a three hit them with a two uh-huh. hit them with a one what's going on everybody this is jabril salam and muhammad hassan and you are listening to the young and muslim podcast assalamu alaikum mm, mama. Oh, mama. y'all remember that yeah. yo i remember this time <laughs> so i i realized that right. i have not been doing my civic duty as a pod, podcast host mm-hmm. and actually doing the beginning of the show like that <laughs> that actually starts the podcast <laughs> um so technically we only have like 40 episodes mm-hmm Sorry, Mo. What you mean? Because I never started the podcast. I never started the oh, episode, yeah, so yeah, we only got that's, like forty episodes. Okay. No, but really, um, we're getting back to that. A lot of you guys actually reached out and was like, "Yo, we missed the man, 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 um, <laughs> and yo." So by popular demand, we're bringing the beginning of the show back. So we're happy. We're hype. I think we drank a lot of Ethiopian coffee. Yes. It is about to be a great night, and we have an amazing episode planned out for you guys because this is the episode that we have been talking about for weeks. Yes, it has been. This yeah. is the episode where we break down and discuss our thoughts on the amazing show hulu special rami you guys may know what it is or you may not have heard of his name but if you haven't look it up right now it's only on hulu it's streaming um 10 episodes so far in season one it was awesome amazing. overall amazing two thumbs up y'all yeah. right and 10 toes down because it was real you feel me so uh, <laughs> 100%. I, I liked it and uh so right now we're, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to break this episode up into two different parts and one is going to be talking about episodes one through five and the other one's going to be talking about episode six to ten so that yeah. we can actually take time and give you our full thoughts on the episode and like we said this isn't to criticize his work it's actually kind of show like where we are because he's about yeah. i think he's about our age yeah, so we can relate age. to it and he made this show for us you well know? before before we go into the show we yeah. want to just give a shout out to Rami big, Yusuf big himself shout. because yeah. dude is on it right now. He's got mm-hmm. an HBO special out. He has a Hulu that isn't yours. This is my water. Okay, well, it's always dude. Happening. Yours is here. I got you. Wait, okay, you know, good. Yeah. Yo, you Just, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, yeah, that's exactly where we're at. Yeah. So, so like, what's what's crazy is this dude, this dude Rami, Rami Yusuf. If you guys haven't heard of him, this dude is a comedian. He's an actor. He was actually mm-hmm. in a Taco Bell commercial. You told me that. Yeah, I, I, I remember I that. I didn't remember. Well, he looked completely. He looked completely different. Had no facial hair. Was wearing glasses, and his hair was like really long. You know, they opened up the first like Taco Bell hotel out here. You know, what? only in America, right? And I just sold out. 
What? Yeah, it's like what a taco. Like I, I forgot what it was exactly, but it was like a Taco Bell experience. So you when know? you, so is, do you have like a taco on your pillow when you go and check in? I don't know. It was one of those things. It was like headline. Like you know, I just read the headlines. I was actually on the radio. Just listened to. It. I was like, okay, I'm not. I wasn't interested in diving deep into it, so I didn't check oh, the facts. Okay. I might be interested. Yeah. Actually, I haven't eaten Taco Bell in like six years. Do you think? Would, would, would you be the type? Hmm. Would you be the type? Would you to stay? I mean, for the experience, yeah. And yeah. I think that's all it is. It's just for the experience. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I digress. God, yeah, man, this on. coffee is crazy. crazy. Look at you. God. Um, we getting wrapped up. No, <laughs> that you, that Oxy- wasn't me. That was you. <laughs> Oxymoron. Getting wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so Rami Yusuf has an HBO special out now. Um, he obviously has a show, which we'll be talking about today. But his show just got renewed, I believe, for a second season. Pretty and, annoying. Yeah, I think yeah. it got renewed for a second season. So Thumbs up. Like, it's, it's, it's really cool to see young Muslims, especially with this type of show, yep. a show where he's going extremely raw, extremely, he's he's going for people's hearts. Yeah, he was extremely vulnerable on this, man. Yeah. Like, put it all out there, I'm not going to lie. But what's crazy is, like, I related to it so, so much. So much, bro. There was so much in it that's like, yo, that happens. Mm-hmm. Either it happened to me or it happened to somebody I know. And I'm like he's exposing mm-hmm. the private parts of people mm. without exposing the people themselves he's okay. like you guys do this stuff and you might not say it to your family or to your community and you might not put it out there on public display but guess what i know because this experience is something that a lot of us go through but we don't we talk about amongst one another mm. like me and you know a lot of stuff mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. we might not say it amongst you know whoever else yeah. but like yo when it comes to your friend in circles, everybody knows that this happens. Yep. Somebody said something to me when we were in college. Mm-hmm. Um, Nordine. Nord- Nord- yeah. You remember, he said something in college. I kind of don't want to say it. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, okay. Like, I, basically, he exposed, he was like, yo, like, the same thing that we be going through, the girls be going through. Yeah. And it, it, like, it threw, you remember that? All right, yeah. so it threw me for a loop, and I was like, whoa. You mm-hmm. think about, it. but then you get a show like this, and it's like, yo, it's exposing different things. It's very real when it comes to the human emotions and what we actually go through. Muslims aren't the, we aren't these, uh, we aren't priests. We aren't yes. like these, these, these people that you see like monks and, and nuns. Like we're we're real people that go through real things, mm-hmm. real experiences, and it's a struggle to be who we are. Yep. And this was his experience, you know. And then one thing that I saw online because there was an article written about it, it was like, look. This may not be the best representation as a whole because I can only talk for myself, but this is the first out there, right? And this encourages others to go out mm. there and do the same because he told the story of an Egyptian Syrian living here in America that most of us may be able to, but some may not. So if mm. you have a story, talk about it so somebody else can relate to it, you know? So that's what He's, I feel he like. He opened up the market. He opened up the market. He, he opened up the saying? market. Opened up the doors. Because, because how many stories do we see of muslims right where you go on tv and it's the dude's name is ahmed or yeah. muhammad and mm-hmm. like I, I, one of the shows that i really like to watch um it, it comes on like regular tv mm-hmm. and they 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 got a muslim guy his name is saeed okay cool yeah. we expected that right <laughs> typical so so then they show him making salat and it's like he's not even making salat right yeah so i was like <laughs> bro like yeah. how dumb are y'all like yeah. yo all these muslims out here and y'all couldn't get one like authentic Muslim mm-hmm. just to like play, like, at least just to pray. Yeah. Like <laughs> if nothing right. else, just pray, put right. us on camera so we can just pray. Right. Exactly. So so it, great point. You know, it, great point. It, it begs it begs me to ask when is it when are we really going to have a true authentic experience? Even if it is from a comedian standpoint, when are we going to have a truly authentic Muslim experience? Right. Mm-hmm. That isn't just this this sugar coated experience or this. Um, stereotype experience when is it going to yeah. be something that we can like we can watch and be like oh snap like yo that's mm-hmm. so true mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying like the five parents or like or just like <laughs> the, the real hardcore fa- you know what I'm saying yeah. but, but it's, it, it's, it's like it's hilarious so I think he did a very good job exposed like he he basically went to the extreme of it yeah and now it's going to be so much easier for us as writers and comedians yeah. and as actors or whoever else to come in and be like, I don't want to necessarily go here. But what if I knock it down? Just not? No, I, I, see, <laughs> no, I see what you're saying because in my eyes, it's like he took down a buffalo. He took down a big buffalo. Now we can all come in and attack and kind of enjoy it. Because if he took down something small, not as many people can kind of like 
reap from the benefits you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah, so he yeah, took something yeah. big down so now he needs people like us to come in mm. and help clean up and talk about those other things that he can't talk about so for example um maybe when i was watching the show i may be wrong i think it was almost like a good amount of film time before there was a black muslim even showed up in there you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. like being, being real with you so it's yeah. like he can't do it all right so he mm-hmm. needs our help mm-hmm. but you know you paved the way rami thank you now it's Time, time for in. us platform to step up and you know follow in those footsteps that you have laid down and that's the whole goal mm-hmm. so all right so before we at we're going to dive into episode one now right um like you said in mm-hmm. the beginning we're going to go through each episode but we're going to be like real free with it exactly, so exactly. It, it, yeah. spoiler around. alert this is one giant spoiler, spoiler episode spoiler, spoiler, so spoiler. if you haven't seen the show make sure you guys go and see it if you do oh, want to get haven't some, seen you may have to just pause it right now and get a hulu account on the, yeah is that good yeah. um hulu is actually very cheap compared to netflix and whatnot yeah. i'm paying like a dollar a month um what i will say is if you do want to get like some good commentary on the show if you haven't seen it yet this will be the episode to do so true um and yeah i'm, I'm actually just looking for my notes now <laughs> i have it up right here if you want to look it up but um, oh you're, about, you're gonna pull right, it here we, yeah i'm gonna pull up mine right here well um so let me just take that off your hands all right cool. so, so uh, all right before all right b- before we go into it right what were your initial thoughts uh going into watching this show oh. like what, what, what were your expectations at and then after you got through it the first episode like what did you think mm-hmm. well my expectation was be- based off what i heard and people were telling me that hey this is a really good show you can relate when once you start watching it you won't want to stop you know so i'm like okay that makes sense I, I i really for me i'm not a guy that keeps up with shows but this one was pretty short you know yeah about one season 10 shows and it's a guy from egypt that's living here in america so i was like okay i think i can relate to it so after mm-hmm. i watched the first one it was totally what i did not expect <laughs> but what people opposite. said it was right like i yeah. didn't want to you know drop the show i continued to watch it mm-hmm. i had fun i felt engaged and i felt like i was involved and can relate to almost like a majority of the things mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. overall like i said i liked it positive i would recommend it um but i think we talk about this it's not something that you watch with your family. Oh, your heck no. You do not watch this with your mom and dad. Yeah, so. Because well, uh, they were like a. S- <laughs> nah, they might say more than what I was about to say. Um, <laughs> that was the PG highlight version. Thank right. You, thank you, Jabril. I think. For, what for, about you? For, Reverse. Hmm, for me, I watched the show during Ramadan, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were like, oh, like, why are you watching? TV? But it was because I was in a point where it was like I was bored mm-hmm. because I, you know, I live by myself and so on and so forth. So. So, initially, I put it on the shelf because I was like, you know what, like, whatever. I don't want to really want to watch this now. And after I watched the very first episode, the opening scene with him and his mom in the car. Yeah. All right. And him like, mom, I need to hurry up. I need to make prayer. Go to Katia Katab. Like, I got to hurry up and get in there. Katia yeah. And... And I was just like, oh, snap. Like, this is... And then, like, the voodoo situation. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, this is nuts. Stay with what we talk about. So, yeah, yeah definitely so caught up so, on that. So, like, literally within the first, you know, five minutes of the Boom. show, you were I, was, I was in. Committed. B- because I... From the from literally the first conversation, mm. I was like, oh, I know this. Yes, I know this. This looks even, familiar. Even I've if, been there. Even if it wasn't I've been there. I know that you've been there. Mm. I knew I knew people. I knew who mm-hmm, he, that person mm-hmm. was mm. going into the first five minutes of the show. And I feel like every person that, that watches this mm. is going to understand that. So, yeah, we might have to just jump in this. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get this right, man. Right, put right, this right. man on a pedestal. Let's, for let's real, for real. Let's but, uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was a good show, bro. Good job, Rami. All Gotta right, give the props to. Uh, okay. So, it's been um, let's get it. So right now, I think you're talking about the opening scene. Let's just start off there with his mom, right? And then what I thought about was like that conversation is very real and it happens often. What was, was the conversation like, about again? Um, if you remember, about you know, like say he was going to kept the kitab and his mom was talking about just him being alone forever. Oh yeah, yeah. If he's going to hurry up and get married, exactly, she, she was exactly like, so. "You need to hurry up. You're losing your hair." You're losing your hair. <laughs> you know how it is. So stuff that we hear all the time. But another thing that I thought about was like, okay, the opening. The opening scene was at a mosque, a local mosque in New Jersey. So I was like, he's not only putting on for, obviously, Islam, right? And putting in a positive light, but putting on for his community, you know, something mm-hmm. local. He put a name on. So I like that because that was kind of like ownership. It shows like mm-hmm. uh, his, you know, he's bringing his people up. But not only that, um, I think, no, I think he said when they first put together the show, like the uh, 
the POC, the proof of concept, and submitted it to Hulu. They say that when they had the opening up with the Adan, right? A lot of people thought it was about terrorists. A lot of terrorist. people thought about terrorism yeah. just from that. Yeah. So having that type of thought and still going through it and still have them starting off at the mosque, you know what I mean? Well, I, well, I thought well, it took a lot of courage, well, too. To he kinda, switched it up, though. He did switch it up. He switched it he up. Switched because, it up and, and I think that was smart. I think it was smart because was even as a Muslim, I think the way it started off was better because I could relate to that conversation and I can relate, obviously, to the then, but mm -hmm. it caught, the conversation caught my attention mm -hmm. because it, we just had the episode on it. It was all about the pressure of marriage off the jump. Off the it jump, was like yeah. it was like, yo, yeah. the okay, mom, I'm going to here. I'm going to like this this quick marriage mm -hmm. ceremony, and then <laughs> I'm out. Right. So so the pressure of marriage is something that you know we feel at the very beginning of the show. It was like. It was real. It was like, oh. oh crap! I like, wow, this dude is literally having a conversation with my mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really, it's really wild. I just right? had this convo. Yeah, I just had this conversation, mm -hmm. right? I just talked to my parents about it this weekend. Yeah. Um, and then it, it also brings up the, you know, if we if we go past that, right? Once you get to, um, when they're in the ceremony, really, <laughs> really, Mo. <laughs> Continue. Like, Continue, to, guys. Hopper. You're going to just do that like 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 it was nothing. Okay, cool. Um, so, it, you know, we're, we're skipping a little bit. We're going to get to the voodoo part. I think that actually is very important. Yes. Um, it, it when they get into the marriage ceremony, right? Mm -hmm. The whole conversation between him and his friends is like, dude, hurry up and get married. Yeah. You need to find a hot wife. Yeah. And like, <laughs> like, oh my god, like, yo. First off, the friends are great, but just the continuation of pressure from every person that's close to you like hurry up and get married like when you want to do this it's like finding love in our religion is like numero uno have you ever noticed that like or is it finding love or is it just finding a partner in general it's just finding a partner just mm -hmm. to be like you know this man is taken off the streets because it's seen that <laughs> once you're married it seems that your life is together, you know? So they think that you if you're up. a certain age and you're not married, like your life's not together, like you're missing something, which is not really the case, you know? Yeah. But that's how people see from the outside. So he did a great job of showing that because that is real. <laughs> cool. So so after that initial scene, he's like, Mom, and you're going, you need to pray, and you so, go to the ceremony, yep. right? He was in. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Whatever. I butcher it every time. You're gonna Anyways. <laughs> you're going to get it. I'm going to get it eventually. Inshallah. That's my one for the episode, by the way. Um, so, so he goes into make voodoo, right? Like he sees the line, he's like, "Yo, screw this! I'm gonna go to the basement." Mm -hmm. Boom, bust a right <laughs> down the hall, bust a right, a, and then he's making voodoo. He makes it real quick. Like, he's in a rush. All, all yeah, of us yeah, done yeah, it. Yeah, all yeah. of us have done it. He goes, hit the ankles real quick. Um, and he looks up. Dude is like. No. Your prayers are never going to count. Mm. And this dude, so... Proper voodoo <laughs> equals proper prayer. Yeah, right. So, so, then this dude's like, he's just doing so much in between every toe, everything. Mm -hmm. Boom. Does does voodoo, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, like, I feel like God will get my intentions. And like, <laughs> I mean, I make voodoo and like, I pray and like, da, da, da. So, is 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 like the proper way to do something, right? And you get the two extremes. You got the dude that's like super, like you need to get in between the toenails, and then you get the guy that's kind of like, like uh, just, I just, I need to just hurry up and do this so I can go yeah. yeah, right. Um, have you had an experience where you witnessed somebody doing way too much for voodoo? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I feel like I, um, for my would do i base it off of the resources that they have so if they have like a woodoo station then i'll go ahead and do would do but if they have like a, a small sink <laughs> i remember uh we were uh washing up for would do I, I told you bro i was like man these sinks are too small man he's like because it's not supposed to fit your whole body it's supposed to fit your hands i was like oh that's what bro, a sink is for <laughs> bro i swear to you i went i was uh going to do so you all, can't right? fit your elbow in here man like, yeah, he's like he was like trying to put his elbow he's like bro what's up with these voodoo it's a sink mo it's not a voodoo station it's a sink yeah. but bro so i'm making voodoo right i'm going I, I don't know where you were at but yeah. i'm going to make voodoo right and this dude this dude's like making voodoo kind of mm. normal. Then you know he he getting up like near the near his shoulders. I was like, okay, that's a little extreme. Okay, right, a little extreme. Then I noticed this dude put soap in his hand. I was like, okay, maybe he's gonna wash his hand. The bottom, this dude, bro, this, the bottom of his earlobe. Bro, this dude washed his hair and his face with the soap 
and kept making voodoo. I was like, bruh, you were doing too much. Like, you came here to make voodoo, not take a shower. Like, this is ridiculous. This is great. Like, bro, legit had to rinse soap out his face. <laughs> like, what? And then um, look, so then there's another instance, right? And yeah. this is this is where I think people go too far and and they make voodoo mm -hmm. and the most disgusting thing is when they don't clean up after themselves like yeah. they just leave water everywhere yeah. they're spitting they're blowing snot out and it's like dude house you, of god you, you have to bro, it, even if it's it not clean. house of god we're making we're yeah. making voodoo in a hotel bathroom yeah. right yeah. The etiquette. be respect yeah have etiquette have etiquette. manners you know what i'm saying like this is nasty because guess what someone else is gonna have to come behind it's you exactly. and either make voodoo or use that sink mm -hmm. and you just left it a mess with your snot mm -hmm. and your toe jam right so <laughs> yeah and i'm gonna get to that they part so gone. so i get get to the bathroom right mm -hmm. you may go to um going into juma this is a separate occasion right mm -hmm. and no this isn't we do it's uh i mean this isn't juma this is um this is uh no no this was during ramadan okay so older dude he's like he's maybe in his 60s okay right and I'm thinking, oh, he he he's just about to make voodoo in the yeah. sink. This man takes off his sandals, rolls up his leg sleeve, puts his entire leg in the sink, his yeah. entire foot. <laughs> and I'm just looking at him like, bro, it's a, like it's not meant for this. Yeah. It's not meant for this. And he he does all that, turns around and walks. So I was like, hey, brother, no, 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 no. I was like, bro, no, 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 come clean, come up. clean this up, please. Yeah. Like you can't leave this. And he was like, oh, sorry, 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 and cleaned it up. This is an older dude, so I'm like, yo, he's about to spaz on me. Yeah. But I was like, bro, you can't look. You gotta respect, respect. when something when you in the yeah. wrong. You know what I'm saying? Somebody trying to bring you back, right? But yeah, like the voodoo part was was crazy, and and I've seen so many people abuse it. However, on the other end, I also know that I've been on the end where mm -hmm. I don't do it properly. Exactly. I rush it because I don't want to hurry. I want to miss prayer. Da, 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 let me hurry up, get in, get out, boom. Yeah. No, I mean, I would agree, like, definitely been on both ends, and then I definitely want to talk more about the side where you take your time, because, uh, you know, I've heard people say that, and i actually seen it, was that, you know, your prayer starts with you would do, you know, like, you do it, you take your time, you do it right, and then you get you, like, in, like, the headspace to pray, you know, because sometimes when you're rushing for what do, you just, like, you think about something else, whether it's there, kind of hurry up and get in line, hurry up and mm -hmm. go for prayer, so it's like, you give yourself enough time to make a proper would do, take your time with, and go to pray, you know, mm -hmm. but definitely have seen both, and they're both true and they're both very real, you know, but both scenarios. So yeah. it's good. I'm glad he showed that. Um, and then, yeah, what, 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 what would you? So, what you take from? Um, he gets in line, right? Mm -hmm. And you could tell, like, he just had this blank stare of, what, what am I? What am I doing? Like, what am I? Tell me what am I supposed to be at mentally right now? When he was praying, or so when, like right before the shark, right before they cut to the dun dun dun, yeah, dun, dun, dun. like he looks down, he looks at his sock. Remember, he had that big yeah. old hole in his sock. <laughs> but it's like if you look at his face, right, he had this look right before he starts making prayer, and, you, and this to me, I look at this look where he's kind of like, where am I supposed to be mentally? Mm. Like, am I am I just like going through the motions with all this? Mm, good point. Good point. And I've been there. I, I've been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Not saying I'm currently there. Not saying I'm not currently there. Just saying I've been in that moment where you're making prayer. And you're like, <laughs> like what's a, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, like you're just unsure of like how you're supposed to feel and like so on and so forth, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know how you get there. Would you get? Would you get out of that that little moment? It was like ten seconds. Yeah. It was really deep. I didn't even. I didn't even think the way you did, so I like that you brought that perspective, you know, because uh, it's pretty cool and pretty fresh. What I thought about was that, like, you know, when he was about to make prayer and he looked down at his socks, it was like, I'm here, you know what I mean? And it was more just, like, um, how he got there, like, how he got to that prayer, like, through that certain scenario, like, me and mm -hmm. that guy and everything, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think, like you said, it was also something going through his mind. He was like, hmm. Like, whether I do it, like, this way or that way, like, it still brings me to the same point. Like, it brings me here, you know? So, for him, I mm -hmm. think it is one of those times, because especially, like, sometimes when you go through prayer, and when I'm about to join prayer, and I may not know where they're at, or I may not know that surah, you know, the one that the imam is reciting, I just kind of go there, and I'm just like, it's like you said, I'm just like, you know, like... You're sitting there singing songs and Yeah, like, I have other things on my mind, you know what I'm saying? And it's like... What really brought me here? You know what I mean? Like, what brought me to prayer? You feel me? So that's what kind of mm, mm, mm. really gets me going. But I, yeah. I, I like what you said also. I think it's a, yeah. you know, very valid point. Yeah, man. Uh, so, so like, after he makes prayer, he gets to the, the ceremony. Yeah, exactly. What, what did you think? 
So he's got his two friends. One's Muhammad. Yeah. Is, is it Muhammad and Muhammad? I think Muhammad and Ahmed. Or, Muhammad and Ahmed. Yeah. Obviously, I should have guessed that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so like he sits down with his boys. Yeah. They're all in the joint. They're, they're talking through the entire ceremony. It's, I think everything. I think everything in that show. He does a good job of pinpointing both extremes. You know what I mean? He's trying to find that middle. Because if you think about Muhammad and Ahmed, like Muhammad was, excuse me, very lenient. You know, throughout Bro. the show and. <laughs> Excuse me, you'll see what we're talking about. And then Ahmed is pretty more firm on things that he's he, that he he's, does. He's firm, but he, it's cool because it shows how diverse you your friends can be. Exactly. Where you can have someone that's, you know, very much practicing, someone that's not practicing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not even going to say practicing. You can have someone who's not as um, as traditional in their religious practice. And you can have someone that's a little less a little more just like yo like yeah. i stick i try and make sure i get all my present about where i'm at that, yeah. that sort of deal right mm-hmm. and and what i liked a lot about it was even though they were at different planes never did they not through the entire show did they ever like criticize one another like oh brother no like you don't pray like what's wrong with you yeah like true. they would get on them like bro like so what are you doing at the end of the day they were just really good friends and know exactly. that they want to exactly you know help each other at the end of the day you mm-hmm. know what i mean no you're exactly right and another thing i mean because as they met you know they were at the wedding and both brothers even though they have different views they had the same point which is why Herb aren't you married, married. <laughs> yeah hurry and get married <laughs> hurry up. but it's crazy because when i go to those type of functions it you know kind of drives me crazy because the whole point of this gathering is to kind of put the focus on the people that are getting engaged not on the all the single people in yeah, the room they, they just use it as me? a setup and it's, they said that they yeah. said that too they were like yo this is a perfect place to try and like find the next girl like what do you mean bro no i just want to come here and just enjoy my man or my you know or like you, my, my sister no, getting are married you, are you slow no <laughs> get married find find her now and all uncles say like look there's a big wedding this weekend keep your eyes open <laughs> like what so that's why you've been inviting me to all these weddings of people Dude. i don't know mo like i'm with Jabril smile the camera coming you send me a hint he's like hey take, take, he's like, hey take a picture with the with the groom real quick <laughs> so they can put it on the facebook we on facebook yeah. oh, man. but what i thought was really cool about the that scene with the friends is that mm-hmm. it's real like that was a real con- like we had those conversations yes. like, bro the girl's so hot like, <laughs> bro like Oh, yeah, I heard she's single. Like, yeah. the, the conversation and girls have the same conversations. Yeah, yeah. Like so, so save us, save us the the the, the lip. You feel me? Like <laughs> y'all talk the same way, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, it was one of those points while I was watching the show, and I'm like, yo, like this dude is really. You remember, like Stevie, his the title of his uh tape is "Say All Tell All." Yeah, yeah. This is what the title of this episode should be: "Say All Tell All." Like within the first. 10 minutes he's saying everything and you're just like oh snap bro and also like rami's young his friends were young but they just make him feel old and that's one thing in the muslim community we we mm-hmm. make ourselves feel a lot older than we really are yeah, you know yeah. so everybody wants to grow up fast and do all these different things like yo you're 22 years old and people are like you gotta have a kid next exactly year, so. like the like you have life all figured out yeah no <laughs> <laughs> all right so no. that was that was episode one right between yeah. the toes so so then he gets into the part where he's like but there's still a lot more episodes. i know i you know so many this is gonna be a long fruitful. episode guys mm-hmm. because because we want to navigate this out ep- all the we want to navigate the show but we want to go in depth with each episode so yeah. even if you have to listen to like one part and then you pause it and then you come back yeah. or maybe you just want to listen through it throughout i don't judge um, this is definitely going to be one of those episodes where we just dig. Oh, we haven't we haven't dug in a minute. Dug, I'm, I'm, we digging. I'm, I'm dugging. Doug, um, you remember the show Doug? That's on the show Doug. Yeah, but but uh, uh, <laughs> um, so so then it then it goes to where he's talking about like, oh, are, aren't you talking to somebody? Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm talking to this girl, like yeah. you know, trying to figure it out. <laughs> but what's happened is he he's talking to a girl that's not Muslim exactly, and. Um, it's a funny conversation because dude got it in and he's like checking the condom to make sure like oh my god like first off you guys matter of fact we'll skip that part but yeah. I think what's important from all that is one it shows that he, one he's having premarital sex mm-hmm. right which a lot of people that we're not saying names or anything don't like, talk about don't talk about mm-hmm. right and then he's also talking to a woman that isn't Muslim exactly and you talked about that a lot mm-hmm. all right like what, what are your thoughts on like that whole scenario like Muslim guys talking to non-Muslim girls and hooking up and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm, how does that mm-hmm. play out? 
I mean, how does it play out on the show? Just, no, no, in real no, life? Just, just like just like in real life. Like, yeah. I mean, you've talked about it before where yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. um, you know, we almost promote as as like Muslim men, we promote like, oh, like talk to all these other girls for mm-hmm. basically soul in your role. Oats, exactly. And then come back and talk to Shorty. Yeah. You know, find, find Habib D later, but, you know, talk to Shorty beforehand. No, you know no, I, mean, I mean, the whole point that, you know, men can talk to women that aren't, Muslim is because the woman usually follows like, you know, you usually uses the male as like an example of to, to like lead the family and everything, you know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. we're different. I mean, we're the same e- equal, you know, same have the same equality, but we have different roles and that's a role that the men play and then that uh, women see us in. So it's like we understand that. But then for us mm-hmm. to go out there and just like, you know, mess around with a whole bunch of different women and come back to a Muslim woman, that's not really kind of fair because we're not putting them as like a priority you know Mm -hmm. or just being Mm -hmm. serious it's kind of taking them like hey i already had my fine let's just go ahead and lock this you lose it as like a settle down it is like a settle down like like a a mechanism you know and it's almost Uh like damn like you got me as like a a plan c you know plan b it's like nah, i shouldn't be like that so he showed that in the show yeah, he really did. He really you did. You know, because oh, was this was the episode also where he so he goes home, so so he him the girl they they talk. She's like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I didn't think you would like the idea that I'm actually Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. and practicing. Yeah. Exactly. And you just like the idea that I'm Muslim. Yeah. And I've come across that where girls are, oh my god, you're Muslim, but like, uh-huh. like I remember talking to this one girl. She was Muslim, and yeah. and like she kept asking me like, are you a crazy? And I was like, a crazy? Like, what? She was like, like, are you like a crazy? And are I'm you like, Muslim, Muslim? Yeah, like yeah, that. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. are you Muslim? Are you like, are, crazy you, are you trying to make prayer? And I was like, I was like, shorty, like, yeah, like I made prayer. Like I go to Juma. Like I want to be able to talk with you about Quran here mm-hmm, and there. Like, mm-hmm. how do you feel about this? Like, I want to be able to go in. You know, I want to have conversations. But she thought I was going to like walk around her friends with a thobe or something. Yeah, or, exactly. And so, so like that right there set the mood kind of off. And I think a lot of people don't like don't they they're like oh I like you because you were with the same religion but even in these Muslim relationships do you guys really want to be a Muslim unit like are you guys really trying to be religiously Muslim or culturally Muslim mm-hmm, mm-hmm. kind of like how people in this country and around the world say oh I'm Christian yeah. but are you Christian or do you just celebrate Christmas That's and yeah. Easter. You know what I'm saying? Or like even Jews, like you get a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm Jewish. Yo. Um, oh, that's the computer. Mm-hmm. Um, you get a lot of people that are like, um, oh, I'm Jewish, but mm-hmm. they 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 don't go to the synagogue. They don't go to, mm-hmm. um, they don't do anything religiously. They yeah. just do all the cultural stuff like, oh, I turned 13. Let me let me get my just you know, by the name, but not the actions. You know, what yeah. I mean? Let and me let me get a bar mitzvah. It's kind of like Drake, right? Like Drake's like I'm Jewish, but like dog. When's the last time you did some Jewish stuff? I don't know that. I don't know his private life, but like you even get the people like Mac Miller, even Lil Dicky. It's like mm-hmm. yo, you say oh I'm Jew, I'm a Jew, but you're saying you're Jewish by like the heritage of your people, not by your religious acts. That's what you're saying. So they talked about that. They hit on that, and yeah. it's like holy crap yeah. because that is it. That is becoming an issue in. The Muslim community, where people are just like, "Yo, I'm Muslim, but you don't do Muslim actions at yeah. all." <laughs> and that, I mean, like you were also talking about how he highlighted the topic of premarital sex. Like we don't like mm-hmm. talking about it, but it's it's true. You know, it like it's out there. You know, so when him showing that, it's like, oh snap! Like we weren't expecting this, and other people like, you know, we, we've seen this, but parents are like, oh no, 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 this can't be happening. Yeah. I mean, just people just don't talk about it and he's actually opened up those doors for people to talk about it you know mm-hmm. so well here we are <laughs> and here we are talking about it, right right so, but it but again it's like it happens mm-hmm. it happens mm-hmm. like it ain't no this ain't no fairy tale so so then after that mm-hmm. he goes home right and he says mom i want i thought it was so funny he was like i was hoping that maybe god would will it for me yeah you know? but but one thing that i saw like even after he got it in with the girl you know what he did um when he got home he still ended up praying you know so oh I yeah really that's a like that. oh yeah you're yeah right. that's so a good, that's a good point so mm-hmm. after he even even though he did that and he sinned you know you can call it like a, a major sin he went back home and asked god for repentance you know law loves those who repent you know and even a lot of people say we shouldn't be sinning but even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was like 
if you guys, you know, like I created you guys to sin and to repent, you know, if that wasn't the case, I would have just wiped you guys out and just brought in another civilization that would repent to me, you know. So when I saw that, I was, you know, I, I liked that, but I was laughing because I was like, I'm not sure if he made Rosa though at home. Like, did he actually <laughs> shower and kind of, you know, handle business the but, way he's supposed to? But then it also begs you to ask a question mm -hmm. Does the uh, intent and does the attempt also count, right? Like, okay. A lot of times, because in that moment, I had the same um, thought as you. Like, damn, like he probably didn't wash up properly. Yeah. We don't know. We don't allude to that. Yeah. But it's like he says throughout the show, I'm trying to be good. And maybe maybe that's not something that he thought about, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you know, he's just like, you know what? Like, I really messed up. I need to make that. But like, let me, let me make prayer. Mm -hmm. And he just goes to make prayer because he's really like trying to really seek repentance and be good. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So does that attempt and the action that he's taking overturn the fact that he didn't make closer mm. because maybe maybe there's just something he didn't think about you feel me he just didn't know yeah because he doesn't read the quran mm. you know what i'm saying it says in the quran it says it pretty clearly That's true but um, he, he he turned to god yeah but he turned <laughs> you know hey you're the one we worship and the one we seek for help right but 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 how do you feel because if you notice the shots where he's about to make prayer, right? They they focus in on his face. It framed. Mm -hmm. He's in the middle of the frame. Okay. They're focusing in on his face, right? And the way that he looked at this moment was he was really trying to search for clarity yes. in what he's doing and where he's going as a Muslim. Mm. And in contrast to before where he was like, where am I mentally? He just couldn't tell. This time when they show him making prayer, it was like you saw that moment where he was just like, Usa. Yes. And, and then that, he and then Allah boom. And that goes back to what you were saying earlier that, you know, it's not just a label. You're not just saying you're Muslim, you're actually doing the actions. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? And mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Like people learn through Islam from what you do and not what you say, you know, what you tell them. So mm -hmm. that's exactly what he did. And like I love how he turned to Allah, you know, in this situation. Then right after that, like you had said, he ended up talking, his, getting his parents involved. Like, yeah. hey, maybe you can help find me the one. But one thing that I started laughing that I really like was that they kept saying, like, if Allah wills it, like, you know, parents, maybe foreign parents, or maybe, you know, I think your dad does too, but just. Nah, it's, it's mainly foreign people. They, <laughs> they refer to, like, Allah in every situation, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, like, hey, I'm ready to get married, you know, I'm ready to find the right one. If Allah wills it, you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> That's why I, I said, like, guys, guys, I need help. We need to actually go out there and find me, like, you know, somebody that's yeah. going to fit me, you know? I mean, you know, if, if, if that was it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought it was something like. I'll be inshallah. Yeah, right. Adele, that's why I liked it. Like, it's, it's true, but I like how you threw it in there because we take that as a now. It's more of a traditional thing to say or more just like. Um, yeah, you say, you just say, you just say it willy nilly. Mm -hmm. Um. I got a question about the lingo, right? Yeah. Um, I'll ask you about that in a little bit. Okay. But uh, when he did talk to his parents and sat down with them, uh -huh. what was funny is his mom was like, okay, what type of woman would you like? Yes. Covered or not covered? Yeah. All right. And I thought that was interesting because like we never think about that. Like no. as men looking at Muslim women, we're always like, oh, they got to be covered. But there's plenty oh, of so Muslim man. women. And I know some. Like matter of fact, we actually just um, mm -hmm. got connected with one really cool girl. She's doing a lot of dope things. Lot of she she doesn't cover up. No. We, matter of fact, we know we know plenty of them that don't cover up, but they're mm -hmm. some of the most modest, some of the most um respect respectable giving, women we know. Respectable giving, yeah. Yeah. So so like I thought that was interesting. And his mom and sister don't cover. Oh, good point. His mom and sister don't cover. Good so point. it was like you also and I, I think that's a good rule of thumb for, for men looking for wives. Get what you're used to. Like, mm -hmm. if your mom covers up and and that is something that you know and maybe maybe you're like, you know, I want this type of girl that does this. Well, that makes sense because, like, you grew up next to that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, your group of friends. Like, whatever, whatever you're used to is what you're actually going to be looking for in a spouse. So he was, like, uncovered. Yes. And she was like, ah, excellent choice. Right? Because it reminds him of his mom. Yeah. Right? Well, I wanted to ask you, though, mm -hmm. just going over the, the show. Yeah. Do you, how was the language? Because you, you can understand Arabic, and obviously mm -hmm. the subtitles are there, and I'm reading mm -hmm. the subtitles. But how how much detail did they actually put into how they're talking to mm -hmm. one another? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think they put a good amount of detail because, like, somebody in that situation could definitely, like, understand it and 
it made you feel even more involved and more connected because like you know foreign parents immigrant parents always sometimes just go one step beyond you know so it kind of showed that one step in a, in a in inside an egyptian household which i liked because i could mm-hmm. really really relate to it and and then um when I was well, thinking well, about when I, when I say language, I mean like the actual like terminology, like yeah. whether using slang in a certain mm-hmm. way, like or was it or was it kind of like generic and no. you could tell, or was, or did it sound like a conversation that was actually like Is in it, your no, household? It sounded like a conversation I would actually have okay. in the household. Okay. It wasn't like any words that it wasn't like Arabic fusa, like like Quranic verbs. It was like household easy words that we would talk to our parents oh, on. You know nice, what I mean? So nice. that's what I was able to relate, especially with like those. Phrase that everybody uses, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that we talked about. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like the only Arabic phrase I know. Intafin and All right. But I thought about it earlier because you talked about it. So when they started asking the question about what type of woman that he liked, so my question like, okay, if you reverse the roles, is that is it the same way for Muslim women? Like for, for Muslim women, like, hey, I'm ready to get married. Will the parents be like, hey, what do you like? Or they automatically trying to build like the perfect men for them like build a man you know like mm. like like a build a bear you know what i'm saying <laughs> build a muslim man put a little know? bit of this and a little bit of that stuff in the heart and put a head Listen, on it so it's just like so the women are thinking same like, okay do i want a guy that's very religious you know a little bit of religious covered you know does he is he modest does he have a beard no beard you know so it's mostly mm. like what the mm. preference is but usually they relate to what they see which could be their parents their uncles so it does tie back mm. to mm. what you mm. said earlier brother nice 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 um so so yeah that the fir- for the first episode i think he hit on a lot of things but yeah. th- what it, happened it the- goes through pretty smoothly so. yeah it go- yeah and it's, it's very quick it's easier yeah. to watch how so all right so his mom next finds some a girl yeah, yeah that's it. next up they're going on a date and it's at a hookah shop. <laughs> a meetup. A me- it's a no, it's a date. With a Wally. Let me be clear, guys. <laughs> Muslim people date. Yes. Whether you want to say they do or don't or not, they do. And it varies by culture what you consider dating. Exactly. So like I'll say like if you're like yo, like I'm Cause I'm talking because you can be like, Oh, I'm talking to somebody, we're engaged, but you're not married and you've seen them alone, that's just like well, well, dating. It's not it's not out. even bro, it's not even like I don't even think I think people put dating as like it's something so serious, like they're hooking up. Mm. Bro, if you're meeting up with Shorty, y'all going to public places, right. and y'all meeting up multiple times, y'all are dating. Mm. Period. What, what else? Yeah, we, we're talking. How long? Like, was this middle school? That's a long conversation, Brody. We're we talking. Like, no. Like, if you're getting to know somebody, you're we're still. The, fi- we, we just figuring it out, man. You're in the know? dating phase. Like, mm-hmm. you're dating. If you go out with one girl, if you go out with Charlene yeah. on Tuesday, and you go out with Fatima on Thursday, you're mm-hmm. dating. You are trying your options. You are. Does it matter where you meet them at? Does that change the type of date? So, for example, in, in this show episode, right, when he met the girl, they met at a typical spot, hookah bars. And then that seems like the new I mean, spot. No, I mean, bro, no, it, a date is a date, period. Mm. It doesn't matter if you meet her at the mosque or if you mm. meet her out at a hookah spot or if you meet yeah. her out with a bunch of friends. I mean, granted, a bunch of friends is a little bit different, but like, yeah. if y'all two meet with the intention of like, yo, like, I want to get in, it's a date. Okay. That's what you're it's a date. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Stop, let's, let's, let's. We're not holding any punches. Because yeah. we won't hold any punches. We ain't holding punches. <laughs> he wasn't. But I guess bro, this one's crazy. Yeah, I, I want people to get tired of meeting people at hookah bars. I don't want to. Uh, hookah bars I would, suck. I right? hate hookah. No, no, right. It's uh, dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but let's drink. <laughs> coffee. Yeah, what? Let's drink coffee. Finesse. Like, like, yeah, I want to go somewhere where actually like, I can like hear you, you know, like not, and then. I should be able to breathe and you stuff. Remember, you know? remember back in the day when we thought me and girls at the club was the move? Oh, oh my God. God. That was. Who go to, just as bad? Go to go to pee bodies and you think you're doing something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Horrible. what I'm doing. He met he met a girl at the hookah bar, but had a Wally, and it was so funny because the way Rami depicted the Wally was a uncle, which really was an uncle, just a friend of a father, which really wasn't a friend. It was just his mechanic, but he was Muslim, <laughs> yeah, and you know he was so willing to go out there, man. right? So I liked how he said the Wally because the Wally really wasn't. He really wasn't paying attention. He really wasn't too concerned. He just wanted to make oh, sure. Oh man, Levin went to the club. Yeah, you know, he's like, he was. Like, I want to make sure the conversation was good, but he had an opportunity to do something else, and he did. And they were finally alone and everything. Mm-hmm. And they actually started really opening up and starting to know each other. Mm-hmm. And then from there, things got a little hot, and they ended up going to the 
car. So disclaimer, everybody, if you're talking to somebody and you do have a Wally do involved, not go to just the car. whatever you do, do not spend one on one time with the car. This is bro a one advice. Look, I'm look, telling you, do not go to the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't like they say. Oh, don't go to his house. No, mm-hmm. don't go to the car. Yes. Don't go in the car, ladies and guys. This is gold. <laughs> look, look, what I'm telling you is, it's a trap. It's yeah, a trap. It's like it's the the freaking stuff. It's a trap. <laughs> yes, the car is Shaitan's hot box <laughs> trap. Like you will get yeah. sucked into that back seat, and yeah. it is over. Right, right. So I was surprised because typically they're like, oh, men, men are the ones that made the no. Shorty made the move, and then they. Started. I thought he was just gonna get, get like a kiss at the end, and yeah. that's it. You no, know? But, he, but he's but like. He, no, so he was she was like he gave like a quick like handshake put a hand he's out like, there it's like, and and what's funny is that goes back to what we were talking about before where we treat non-muslim women one way and then muslim women Thinking one way muslim women are different than and other so women. and she was like oh so you think that like i don't ki- give yeah. you know kiss on the first day or have those type of desires to do so exactly you know exactly so 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 they go into this whole basically this whole scene is mm-hmm. about how we as Muslim men look at Muslim women as though like they're just like these boxes that don't have desires and and we expect them to be completely different from us but in reality they go through the same emotions same mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. desires that we have right like let's be real women get horny too yeah, so, yeah, so and that's basically what she was saying like that, that, you know yeah. how you know how weird it was for me to just say that word I was about to say exactly it was, weird. I <laughs> it was just that, weird me hearing it's like like, I mean, but it's but it's but but that's the thing, right? Uh, it, it happens. It's true. Like, it w- women get aroused. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> it, it happens. It it, it's, 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 it's just it's just honey. it's just weird to talk about because yeah. we've we've normalized this idea it's, that Muslim women don't we, we do just that. Hit it. We just thrown it under the rug for so long. Just kept digging the, the topic. You feel me? Just <sighs> keep God, that's digging. That's a lot of it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> So that Ooh. episode, the episode ends, and you're like, "Yeah, that was what just and that, happened." That's how it ends. You know what I mean? Yeah. So your mind has been blown since the beginning. Yeah. And so <laughs> you're just like, "Okay, I relate to his character," yeah. and you don't have to relate to every part of him. Exactly. No. But you, but the the thing with this first episode was that at some point during this episode, you recognize who Rami is mm-hmm. because you recognize him in your group of friends or maybe family members or whoever. And each character represents someone completely different. Yes. All right. Mm. Um, at the first episode, I was like, all right, second episode. Exactly. Yeah, I was like, second, let's, on let's to go. the next one. Bring the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so the second episode, we meet more. What I liked about this episode was yeah. that you meet more characters you get more in depth about his mom mm-hmm. his his dad a little his bit friends his uh the guy i remember he was helping the uh was the handicapped friend what was his name or the brother in need oh steve steve steve, steve. that yeah. oh yeah was that when um they were at the, the Bro, bathroom as soon as the episode started right I, I put start off by helping somebody when the episode started he's helping him out like that takes a lot of commitment to help yeah. a friend like bro that's time because he, he's, he's handicapped you know what so, i mean so it's just like simple things that we take granted for such as using the bathroom being able to wipe on your own like you have somebody yeah, helping you with point. that like that's Good point. but that's what a muslim does you know what i'm saying so that's why i really did like the way Here, here's, here's, or just just being a good person bro. exactly and that's what i was gonna get at right like he he says over and over i'm just trying to be good i'm trying mm. to do the right thing mm-hmm. even though you're messing up drastically right like you got major sins you're hooking up with women mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. stuff like that like he's just trying to be good, yeah. and his vice keeps getting the the best of him. But at times, you always see where his intention is. You know mm-hmm. where his heart is. Mm-hmm. There's this quote um, that Ryan Babel, soccer player, put up a long time ago. This is like when I first got Instagram, and the quote was, "I might not always say the right thing, but my heart is always in the right place." Mm. And that joint it always stuck with me because so often. Love. <laughs> like we, so often do we like our our heart and our attention are in the right place, but like we're 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 so weak when Ooh. it comes to our vices. Ah. We're so weak. Yikes! It's it's hard. Right? Yeah. No puns in. Um. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> go on. So so like for him, mm-hmm. he is helping out his friend. Like, how many of us would would really help wipe another man's butt? On a regular, on yeah, on a, this like this is like an everyday thing. This, I'm sure this is what he does. He's just a good friend, right? Like that has to be 
blessings in that. It has to be. Right? And guess what? Right after he helped them, he was about to pray or trying to pray, but then they had a, a company meeting, right? Which showed- no, no, no. You skip, you skip this part. So, so as he's like, I'm, a, I'm just going to wash up my prayer real quick and we'll go to the meeting. He's like, he was like, we have to go to this meeting. You don't have to oh, pray. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so, so Good. then, you, my then, man, my then man. you're like, then you're like, oh, snap. Like, yeah. I've thought like that before. Mm-hmm. I need to go and get this, but I don't got to pray. Yeah. Uh, like I can make up, I can make it up later. Exactly. It's like we 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 yeah. push prayer to the side, and and I'll be honest, like I've done that recently. Like that's I did, real. I did that. Y- that is yesterday. real. <laughs> at, at the workplace, whatever you're doing, like that's it, bro. That's yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and that can be prayer be pushed back into anything. Like ah, I I gotta catch this game real quick. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I gotta do this, so it can be whatever. You know. But but it, it wasn't. What's interesting was it wasn't him. He wasn't it was pushing the, it back. Was the outs- it was the outside influence but, yes. that was saying, like, bro, like, nah, come on. You can do that later. But like, why are you tripping? Also, but that's also real because that oh, also very, happened, very, you know? Very. But he had the intention to. He was about to, but he was like, oh, snap. Let's, damn, Let I guess ahead. he means about to start. So mm-hmm. they had the intention. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, uh, what had happened was that the meeting was about – him losing his job <laughs> so it really wasn't actually anything positive which made me think i was like man he missed prayer and then for this big meeting and the meeting was bad news you know what i'm saying so i'm not saying yeah, the prayer would have changed anything yeah. but i was like look what the prayer was missed for you kind of see what i'm mm, saying damn good point yeah Very I like good the, point. you know i'm not saying would have changed it but i'm just saying like but but look how conflicting he like the show is a reflection yeah. of his life, right? Yes. He does something good to start off with, mm-hmm. helping his friend. <laughs> then he's like, "I'm gonna make prayer." Yeah. Peer pressure intervenes. He doesn't make prayer. Yeah. Something bad happens. Right. And you, what was he doing right before that? He was right before, he was, right before the announcement came. He was giving Steve like he was holding the beer for his friend. Oh. And so it was like it's like there's so many while well, he was sitting at the compared, straw. There's there's so many conflicting parts of who this guy is. He's not just this one faced individual. Like everyday struggle. He's shown the everyday struggle. Exactly. Exactly. Like, oh, he went and bought beer for his friend at some point and it's like, it's not for me. Like I don't drink. It's for my friend. See, I, I love it because like this is like things that Muslims here in the US and Canada, or at least the West, they say it, this is like everyday things we have to deal with, you know? Yeah. So it's like I feel like we may go through more tests and trials to other people in Muslim countries because at that point I'm not saying it's it's what can I I'm say? Not, it's I don't want to say it's minimized, but like there's more cultural infusing, and we'll talk about it more later on. More cultures, more ideologies, and stuff like that. And you have more people that just aren't Muslim. You feel me? They just do different things, you know. So yeah, it's exactly, like exactly. definitely just like a learning curve yeah. and everything, you know. Yeah. So, so good point. This episode point, was heavy, heavy on not him just losing his job, but having to deal with family members who yes. you don't agree with who and i think you have to lead on this one because <laughs> um and we grab it by the horns yeah because like you have family members who are like very much um quote unquote cultural mm-hmm. traditional mm-hmm. right or they they talk about the uncle so he loses his job his family's like oh go go and talk with your uncle we want to work <laughs> with your uncle because he's successful but, but before the uncle uh-huh. uh Remember when he lost his job? He says, "Mom, what are you doing? Like it's Saturday, I'm supposed to sleep in." She, oh no, you, you have no job. <laughs> she says, "The day it doesn't matter what day it's to you <laughs> because you have no job. It, it, it doesn't matter what day it is." And I thought about it because that literally just highlights the perception of a man always having a job. Like you can legitly never be quote unquote He's in like, between it's, jobs. It's only been a week. <laughs> it's only been a week. Well, look at you. You're a failure. You've been home for a week. You are failing. You ain't making no money. You ain't making no money, no man. Money. So, dog, trust me. Like, you know, I know the women have a lot of pressure. But for guys, too, man, like, if we're laid it's off for friend. a day, bro, we're, like, we're basically forced to get any type of job. Okay, just hurry up and apply for Uber. Like, dang, let me just man, actually let think about. Out life let me quick. figure out what I want to do. Man, but but that's what he said. So, he's, like. They're like, hurry up and get a job, work for your uncle. He's like, I don't want to, I want to do something I'm passionate about. He's like, because passion is for white people. Passion is a made up thing. Passion is for white people. We don't have passion. We work hard. Uh, that was such, that was so foreign. You know what's shit. It, it, but it's not foreign. I was it's just not about to say that. It's, it's not foreign yeah, yeah. because my, I look at my family, I look at my pops. We've been here. Mm. The idea like that white people can go and pursue and dream. their dreams and passions they can actually dream is a, a actual real thing because yeah. like we have to work until we're in our 60s and God, 70s and not saying that white people don't but it's the perception it's the idea it's the stereotype that 
they can do that, but we can't. And who put those limit, limits on us, right? Like, why do we put these limits on ourselves? And I, I think you see the complete contrast in today's generation versus our parents' generation. Yes. Where we're like, mom, like, there's opportunity out here for me to actually do what I love and want to do. Yes. So yeah. why why do I need to go and work a job where they don't care about me? They don't like just to make as much money as I can. Yeah. Like what is he's like money doesn't money doesn't matter to me. It doesn't equal success. And as you exactly. want to change that. Exactly. We want to change the world. But the pro, but but you see where the problems lie on both ends. You get the you get your parents who have given up on certain dreams and yeah. ideologies of grandeur. Yeah. But they make money, and then mm -hmm. you get the people who don't make any money, but all they talk about is changing the world. Like yeah. you can barely change your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start. You need Always to start. Off being able, you need to start being able to put some change in your gas tank. Yeah, you feel I know. Me? See, it's very conflicting, like you said. So yeah. So so now they get to the uncle, and the uncle he uh, runs a jewelry shop. Mm -hmm, all right, mm -hmm. he's apparently misogynistic. He's multi-layered. Yeah, he's a very, he's very multi-layered <laughs> So I want to wrap this one up real quick because I, I yeah. want people to watch this episode yes. because it focuses a lot on their relationship with the different people in his family, mm -hmm. but then also on the uncle specifically. And what I will say is this about his uncle. Mm -hmm. He's multi-layered and you can go in more detail because you know like yes. you're Egyptian so you yeah. can kind of talk about the fobbish mentality, uh -huh. the things that he was saying, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> What was interesting about his uncle was how he presented him as one way, right? Yeah. This 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 hardened man that was really a hole to everybody, who was really um, misogynistic, mm -hmm. who was anti-Semitic. He's like, how can I be anti-Semitic and we're Semitic? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was that was hilarious. That joke was so funny. And and like his like conspiracy theory about like the Jews and I was like yo he's kind of right. <laughs> I was like, oh, snap. He's onto something. Oh my god. <laughs> so so like he's talking about that and like yeah. so so you're looking at you like yo I know who this guy this guy is he is extreme but yeah. then you get to the end of the episode and you're like wow like yeah. they, you really like him like you they 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 set you up to hate this character because they know. You know, you're following through his mm -hmm, perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then by the end of the episode, you, as well as Rami, have a breakthrough with this particular character. And it's, it's amazing because that's really that's really how life is. You don't know people in your family until you go through an experience with yes. them. Yes. You know? No. So how, how did you view his uncle? How how did he come off to you, you know, in the beginning and then towards the end? I would say um, the way I viewed his uncle was definitely through two different lenses. One was that we all have that uncle you know that uncle mm -hmm. that may own his business that may have some money that you know may not talk too much about his family but it's always like hey look if you had your own job you wouldn't have to work for somebody you actually hang out with your kids so Man, i thought that that's was my really dad funny, right <laughs> you always got that person and he's true but it's like oh my god i like like i get it but it's it's funny because you have that uncle and then you also have that uncle who like you you look at him you know he may seem successful but you see his like his marriage you know it may not be on point you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying because mm -hmm. it just Maybe he's working all the time, just have a different kind of outlook on life. But another view that I saw his uncle as, I saw the uncle almost as the religion of like Islam, almost as Muslims and how not, I don't want to say non-Muslims see them, but people that don't understand Islam. So for example, people that don't know Muslims, we think, they think that we oppress our women. They think that mm -hmm. um, like we hate Jews and that's not the case at all, you yeah. know, and that we're stereotypical. So, but then it's like, huh, well, once I started to get to this, understand this individuals, like understand the religion, we understand that no, they're not oppressing their women, they're protecting their women. And these are the reasons why, yeah, you know. So yeah, he had yeah, a line yeah. in there. He said, "We protect our women not because that we don't trust them, but because we don't trust men." You know, and I absolutely yeah. love that line. So it actually it shows something. That joint was eye open because it, it shows cause, you know because if you have somebody that's not Muslim, it's like oh wow. So the clothing that the women wear, the women wear it to protect themselves from other men. You know what I'm saying? Like that not, kind not of not to hide themselves. Not to hide themselves. This is for protection. Like wow, that really changes the whole conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what happened with the uncle. Well, it's like he's actually not misogynistic. He's not anti-Semitic. So it actually changed the conversation well, about I don't him. Say he's not anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely on that. Uh, you know, on that border. Well, 
what I thought was really interesting about that, you know, that quote that you just threw out, right? Mm-hmm. Like he talked, they they're driving and they're they're showing the girls and they're like, it looks like they just came from a party and yeah, dress, yeah. you know, they got like really small dresses and like mm-hmm. guys are like like trying to you know whistling at them basically yeah, with, with the cat, cat calling, yeah, the cat, cat calling, yeah, yeah. and like the girls like throwing up in the middle. So he's like, he's like, hey, little they, mama, they, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was like, so he this is. He was like, so this is what they call liberation. Look mm-hmm. at this. He's mm-hmm. like, is that what you want for that for you your want? woman? Mm-hmm. Like this is liberation, right? And I was like, damn, he's got a good point. Like we in this country specifically, they they say women liberate themselves by taking everything off. And he was like, but there's liberation and being able to control is like you said being able to control what men focus on mm. and then also being able to control you know how you're treated because automatically muslim women demand respect we talk about like the difference no why games. we you know mm-hmm. saying they demand mm. if they if they are respectable right mm. like you demand a certain yeah. level of respect like no you know what you're not going to be just trying to objectify me through yeah. my body yeah. and i you know we follow different um hijabi models and things mm-hmm. like that and um, Maria Idrissi actually uh, I was on her story and she was saying how a lot of these agencies and these models they're using the hijab is like this sex symbol yep, damn. and I was like I was like really and and I look at like what she does and I look at people like that she's kind of put on and mm-hmm. I'm like okay that is a lot different than like this over yeah. here it's a lot different it's not like this it's, there's a point to it and I think sometimes we miss the point to, of it right um and so then, you know, there's a fight. This guy is fighting with this woman, and he's, like, basically about to hit her. Yeah. And he's like, stop the car, stop the car. And he goes and, like, like fights the guy. He goes to the rescue. And gets whooped. Don't save her. <laughs> you don't want to be safe. Don't save <laughs> so, so, uh, so, and then he delivers the line, you know, yeah. we, we, oh, what was the question? So we protect our woman not because we do not trust them. But because we don't trust men. Yeah. And so I think he's talking about, like, when it comes to how we monitor how they dress and, you know, like, where they go and things like that. Because he's like, we understand how much of dogs we are. Yeah. And we're trying to save y'all from us. Now, that doesn't justify all the craziness that we no, see no, no, and no, stuff no, like no, that. No, like, no. But I think what his point was, I don't think it was so much just about how they dress in the hijab. He's like, our duty as men as a whole this is to be the hijab for women. Mm, that's we gotta what protect is, that them. barrier, my man. Got to be that barrier for the women. Mm, mm, mm. That was that was that was honestly one of my favorite episodes. That was a great episode, and and that's the way it ended, you know. Mm-hmm. And he even pulled out a, a, like a pistol on my man, but uh, you know, then the guy ended up backing off, and yeah. the girl still ended up going with him. So that also showed. Like, I thought that was interesting when was he interesting pulled out the too. when he pulled out the pistol, right? Because mm-hmm. then that showed that he is participating as a citizen within this country. Ooh, yeah, using his Second Amendment rights. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and at the this right time, arms. And at this time where we're we're kind of talking about that, where everything happened in New Zealand, and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. most of those bearing arms, it's like, yo, that was actually a very important Good piece point. i didn't think about that. that's what i'm saying like he light bulb he, rami rami put in very because he wrote it small yeah, he, details he directed it so yeah so like it. even the minor things like that you're like man the devil's in the detail i'm telling you that's well this. maybe the angel because he, <laughs> what, what he showed angel. in that what he showed in the instance was he went out to help somebody do right right mm-hmm. like a law commands us to help those if at first you see someone speak out put your hands on it hitting your heart he put his hands on it right yeah true because he told the guy to get away true. and then he had to protect himself and he protect himself with the right of the land yeah just to bear true. arms true and that that's that's something that we should learn for our own communities like mm-hmm. yo we have to be able to protect ourselves because in a situation where maybe we're trying to help someone and if someone threatens to kill us like yeah. hey mm, i was about to go south north mm-hmm. you know you better you know what i'm saying like pg yeah like What's up? What's up? Yeah, bro. Uh, so so we leave that episode. Amazing episode. We leave Amazing. that episode and then we jump into episode him three. So now is He's accepting the job with Zonko. Hold on. Is it is it Ramadan yet? No, he. Uh, no, no, it's not Ramadan. No, 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 he is. accepts the job with his uncle. It is actually no. It is it's, Ramadan it's the, because it's, it's after he Ramadan. accepts it, you know. He starts talk, working with his uncle, and his uncle's not really fasting. But right before we get into that, um, I think when the episode starts off, they're talking a lot about business in the Diamond District, which they say is, quote-unquote, 
own a majority by the Jewish community, which I'm not sure about. I need to check my facts. If you guys know, hit us up on Instagram, Young and Muslim. That's Young, the letter and Muslim. But anyway, what I liked was that what I liked was that even though this is a quote unquote Muslim oriented uh, you know show, he showed and educated the world about the Jewish community. You know, talking about not doing business on Shabbat. You feel me on like a holiday. Um, talking about like Sabbath and stuff like that. So I thought that was very interesting to come from an uncle that is quote unquote anti Semitic, but was teaching us about the community, you know, about the beliefs within the Jewish organization. Yeah, you know but he was saying? also finessing, bro. He was finessing. He, was, no, no, he, he was finessed finessing. hard. He yeah. was like, he was like, I open on Sabbath <laughs> because I'm the only jury shop hey, in in, so in the near area. But sometimes that's how you gotta learn is by finesse. You feel me? Oh man. So um, yeah. So I think that, and then what happened after that? Well, was he fasting right then and there? No. So, so he was. So he was. Oh no, bro! This was why the beginning was so big. So you're talking about the business and all that stuff. He's like, his uncle's eating. He's like, are yeah. you not fasting? It's the yeah, first yeah. day of Ramadan. <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, I'm not fasting because you idiots fall Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I didn't see the moon. Yeah, I didn't sight the moon, yeah. so how can I fast, right? So that goes into the greatest debate of American Muslims ever. Which happened ever. huge you right now. This you, year was big. You have to follow the sighting of the moon where you were located. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is a sunnah to do so. Period. You cannot sight the moon in Saudi Arabia and say we are fasting here. Mm, they mm. Ca- they cannot happen like that. You Sorry. can't. You can't use math. And Saudi Arabia finessed everybody. Finessed. They finessed. They finessed Hit man. him with the jug. Yeah. They, <laughs> they had people fasting twenty nine or twenty eight, twenty nine days out here. You know what I'm saying? So so that's why it's so important. And he put it in there. His uncle was like, "You follow Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia is the most corrupt country <laughs> of all of them." Say that. So it's like, so he's right. He's like, "Yo, like the only only two good things came out of Saudi Arabia." What do you say, Prophet Muhammad? No, this is my dad. So my dad says, the "Prophet Muhammad came out of there and the Kaaba." He said, he said Kaaba, that's, yeah. "Those are the only two good things that ever came out of Saudi Arabia." And dates uh, and <laughs> and their mint tea. Are you going too far now? Well, they do get some great. I, I can I can find I can find that anyway. <laughs> Go to Thailand. You remember the, uh, the 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 um the the the, the freaking Lipton green tea joint? The old mm. commercial. He's like, you get the tea leaf and then you pluck it. <laughs> <laughs> you pluck it. Oh man, I used to love that commercial. But um, so so yeah, like him. I think them starting off like that, yeah. bro. Again, again, the first five minutes of each episode yeah. are critical. Like you can read into each episode so much because you're like, bro, he put that in there. That is literally one of the, and he he glazed over it, mm-hmm. like it's a regular conversation, glazed over it, yeah, <laughs> because that's how we treat it. We yeah. treat it the same. Oh, I'm not fasting today because we don't fall Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay, well I'm fasting today. Well, no, like, bro, are you? No, we can't. Mm-hmm. Right. So I thought that was amazing how he kind of just like hit that at the very beginning, and then he's very precise on that. Yeah, hit it hard and kept it moving. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. But uh, it also showed that like he's telling Rami like you know. Oh, like, uh, why are you taking this Ramadan seriously? Like, are you a sheikh now? You know, and that's sometimes that kind of hurts somebody that really wants to get into this month real energetic and stuff like that, you know? So it's like yeah. somebody's real happy about the month, about Ramadan and everything. Don't shoot them down, you know what I mean? Obviously, you check out our episode Expectation versus Reality, but um, for Ramadan, it's, I always see like the old heads do that, you know? It's like, yeah, they kind of shoot us down and almost like... Uh, spiritual draining when it comes to Ramadan so it's almost like I felt like he was trying to like knock Rami's game because Rami's trying to take it serious but not only the uncle the other people in the episode too like dang you're taking this Ramadan thing pretty seriously you no, know? no 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 so you're, you're getting that's, no you're getting that mixed up with the you're getting that one mixed up with, with the, the, do, the Ramadan. Do, do, do the Ramadan yeah that was yeah. that was but, that was so far but that wasn't even here just like no, 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 that was, was no I don't think he was trying, trying, to, trying to knock him I think he was basically saying like yo you're not fasting on the right day because you're following a country that Okay, now I was even talking about just even beyond that. But anyway. Yeah. yeah um, so so that's that. how it started out. Start, mm-hmm. he, he started off with that. They started off talking about the business with then, the Jews. Then he started working. Well, yeah. Well, he sent him to the Jewish man's exactly. house, on, which was working. supposed to be Sabbath, right? Exactly. And, the, and it's funny because he even exposed how, like, Jews mm. still do work on Sabbath. 
but like that but we all we're all exactly the same right we're not perfect exact whatever religion you're in you know what i mean it just shows because they even get to the girl the dude's granddaughter who's there and he's she like played you, a very important role yeah she was like he was like you work on Sabbath. she was like yeah it's killing me <laughs> like real being <laughs> sarcastic and it's, it's funny you know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's hilarious and so then they start having a conversation because I think they're both like Palestinian or like have those roots from that region, yeah, yeah, from that region of the world, you know. And they and they had like some real deep convo about it wasn't really deep, but it was like they they talked about like the land like, and like he the, sprinkled the, in politics. Yeah, he I sprinkled, love yeah, that. That drum was crazy. Politics. Like I didn't catch it at first until yeah. we like we started talking about. It, but mm-hmm. like, um, I, I like I like how with this episode everything was very casual in the conversation mm-hmm. and. You had to. I watched the episode like three times. All right, so he meets his girl, mm-hmm. and then they end up like partying. All right, and him and his boys, Ahmed and Muhammad, they all go out to this party. But even before the party, you remember when they were having that conversation, and he was talking about like she was talking about the curls. She's like, "Oh, you got like the you got kind of like the Jew curl going on." You remember? He's like, "No, the Jews it took it from us." Talking about the Palestinians. Mm-hmm. And he was like, just like they took the land. And then she was like, okay, how about we share the curls and the land? You feel me? So I love that part because it shows mm, equality mm, between mm. the Palestinians and Israelis. And it shows that we're not like our parents, the first generation. Like, we don't care about that stuff. You know, it's like we're from the same land. That's, and it's just crazy. like, maybe, we want to be. Maybe that's here, right? I mean, mm. it might, it, maybe that's just here. That might and, be. Maybe, and maybe it's just the people that aren't like intense about it. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I've seen, and maybe, you know, the internet doesn't always tell the truth, but. Uh. I've gotten the impression that the young people are also very much engaged in saying mm-hmm. like we we want to keep this how it is, and it's it's crazy to me like how we neglect human rights. Yeah, like that you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, it's a lot of human rights activism going on in the you know in the episode. Like I said, it's mm-hmm. very strategic politics. Mm-hmm. You know. Sprinkled in there. So, so I want to skip. I want to skip to the party because yeah, we're, that's where we're at right now. All right, that's where we're at. Okay, cool. So, mm-hmm. so you get to the party. Yep. He's out there. One of his boys is out there, like making mixed drinks and mm-hmm. like dancing, and it's, it, like, he's having a great time. Yeah, I'm having yeah. a good time. Watch him have a good time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Rami ends up like he's dancing with the girl, and then you know they end up like not hooking up completely, but like they're kissing and stuff like that. And his other boy Ahmed, he's making prayer. I can't and you, do this. And you pointed, and well, he made prayer, and then he like went in the room and slept. Like that was yeah. just not his vibe. But again, I love how he didn't try and kill the mood. He was just like, "Yo, you guys do your thing, this have fun." Is this isn't my? This isn't for me, right? Yeah. So then, um, while Ahmed is asleep, or before he goes to sleep, he makes prayer. Yeah. Remember part and you no. point out what would you point out, bro? Because that drone was crazy when you pointed out to me. I was like, whoa. No, no, but while he was making prayer in the room, uh, they show like you know while he was signing off. You know what I'm saying? Give me salam, salam here. Signing <laughs> off and salaming off, baby. All right, got him out. Peace. Uh, <laughs> there was the Israeli flag in the room, and they positioned like right over his head. You know, as so, he's making prayer, salam. As he's making yeah. prayer, so yeah. I really did like that. I was like, man, like he's. He's Dude. coming for those punches. You yeah, Rami, Rami, Rami is good. <laughs> but that's the mind of a comedian, right? It's the subtle things. That's the mind of a comedian. And yeah. you can definitely tell um, from, from how he's doing that. So so after that, mm-hmm. or somewhere in that jumble of the, the party, yeah. he, him and the girl, they go into the room. It's, there's multiple people in the room, whatever, and someone on the bed is like, "Here, take this." Yes, and she some, grabs one. Some some e. She yeah. grabs some ecstasy and she takes it, mm-hmm. and they offer him some. He's like, "No, no, I'm good." And he's like, "What um, is this?" Yeah, he was like, "I don't just like take random pills and like nah." So then um, he leaves. The girl's like sad or whatever, but she keeps doing her thing. She's she's feeling the whole vibe. So they get to the next day, and. Um, well, I do. I mean, yeah. well, well. Shout out to Rami because, like, he encouraged people not to, not to do drugs, be, be pill poppers, and, well, and, and and to say no. I mean, think well, about it. That's why I say he's a seesaw, bro. He's a seesaw because <laughs> in that scene, he's like, no, I'm good. But then, yeah. like, then this is where peer pressure comes in. Mm-hmm. His friends, the the next day, they're at the diner and they're like, oh, yeah. he's like, oh man, she didn't touch me bad. They're like, yeah, but then he sees a picture of her with another dude, mm-hmm. and they're like. Dude, she offered you X and you didn't take it, and they're all looking at him. <laughs> Even Ahmed is like, "What? You didn't take?" It? So, like, yeah. so, so, so. That's again where like those your friends are like, "Yo, are you dumb? Like, I, of course take it, mm-hmm. right?" 
but he's like conflicted. So it's again, it's the same thing that we saw in the second one where shows it's both he, sides. he wants to do something right. It shows both sides, you build like sides where the Muslims, if they're in a situation, they may say no, and some of them legitimately may fall into peer pressure. You know what I mean? So it shows yeah. both sides, but they're both absolutely real. Well, he's like, you know, you know what, like. F- like whatever, screw it. And so, he take, so he takes um, a weed gummy. Yeah, an edible. Is that where we are right now? <laughs> yeah. So he takes the edible, and I mean, I don't, I don't, th- I don't think we need to go in so much detail with that. Mm-hmm. I do have questions about weed, mm-hmm. and not, not like how's it feel, but like where, where certain people stand with it, because mm-hmm. that is an interest. Like that is a very interesting topic that no one talks about. Mm-hmm. No one talks about weed. And I've personally seen what it does in yeah. terms of it being a medication. Because that's what Steve was using it for, was yeah. medication. It was the highest dosage because of, you know, his condition. Mm-hmm. And after Rami took if you look at the show, for those that watched it, he was acting abnormally, you know. And then has you thinking, like, did he, like, what kind did, did he hype up weed? Like, does weed do yeah, that like are you yeah, at the point yeah. where you don't know what you're saying because when he went over to steve's house to his he mom was talking reckless he was yapping running yapping at the mouth you know saying stuff that you're like hmm. yeah he was saying so he was saying Did he have stuff. no control over himself right now you feel me? no i think he had control but like for his first time like, like getting, it. getting smacked it was like i don't know i I don't. I don't know. I. I don't. If you've seen the show, hit us up. Uh, we yeah. would like to definitely continue this conversation. You know, uh, we we want to see if that if that was fake news or not. <laughs> um, so uh, so so. Then you get to this part where he goes to the mosque, right? Yeah. He goes to the mosque and he's like, I need to like. He feels this need to kind of like cleanse himself yeah deep and clean so he ends up talking with this this guy and this dude is like real chill he's like salams bro what's going on man like and so so but he can relate to him and what i love a lot about this particular part of the show was he he meets this guy mm-hmm. and this guy off rip no judgments and yeah, he exactly. comes he comes at him at a very like real level like yeah dude like he the meets prophet, him where he's at yeah. peace and prayers man peace and prayers that's so so dope yeah. i just <laughs> love those dope hadiths yeah, and he like yeah. gives him a hadith and it's, it's paraphrased I here still, and there. yeah i still remember that too but the but the but it, it it hit deep it hit so deep that he ends up going to clean the entire mosque the whole mosque and then he um he ends up making prayer like he's like i need to clean mm-hmm. and the title of this one is called little the black spots black spots and and basically he needed to clean the black spots on his heart oh. every time he commits sin try and clean and do more good and that's something that again he talks about in the show i just want to be good mm. and i think he got there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i think when well, i got there but i think like it showed his commitment to wanting to just be better do better you know what I mean? No, I, I like that because it showed him legitimately, you know, cleaning his heart by praying, but also physically cleaning, you know, like the mm. moss. So it made me think like, look, if you want to cleanse yourself, you can cleanse it through prayer, but you can also cleanse it by just doing good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, helping mm-hmm. those in need because from there it really humbles you and helps you become a better person because you see what you can do to help the world. But also when you help people, you help yourself. You mm-hmm. feel me? So that's what I like about that, you know? So now, right, right? Mm-hmm. we go to the part where he's making prayer. Like, it, again, it's always very quick. They never, like, sit there yeah. um, on them the whole time while they pray. It zooms in on his face, middle of the frame again. Mm-hmm. What expression did he have in comparison to the first two times in episode one mm-hmm. that was different? This time, I feel like he was a lot more focused in prayer, a lot more confident, and I felt like he knew like what he wanted to, to get out of the prayer, you know? And this mm-hmm. time, I guess, I felt like he might just be more sincere, you know? Because mm-hmm. I feel like when you go through certain situations, like, or calamities or whatever it is, that's just a way for God to bring you closer to him. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Because... Mm-hmm. Depending on what type of person you are, I think we talked about this a few days ago, Jabril in the car, is that some people get closer to God when they're happy, some people get closer to God when they're sad, some people get closer to God during both times, you know? Yeah, but I think the biggest yeah. the biggest thing is just always trying to be close to God, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I think that's where he felt like he was at with that prayer time this time around. He's like, you know what? I want to be here. Not like the first time, like, how did I get here? You know, it's like, hey, 
I wanted to come here. I know I got here and how I got here and I know what I want to get from this. So mm, mm. Yeah, that's what, what about you? Um, I think this time the look in his face, the expression, mm-hmm. the expression was more of one where it was like he felt he felt relieved mm. going into prayer. Okay. Like he, he went in feeling lighter. Mm. And you could you could kind of feel that like he just cleaned the whole mosque. Mm. He kind of he, he didn't bring too much yeah, like he, with him. To he, the, didn't, he didn't come heavy. Mind. He didn't I come like heavy. That. So I like, like he that. he as you said like the metaphor of cleaning the mosque was him kind of clearing his head and cleaning yes. out yes. you know that those black spots on his heart right. And then I would say him getting that time to talk with the guy was also uh, it was it was a big part of how he went into prayer because. He didn't go in there and talk to some sheikh, and the sheikh was like, "Oh my God, stuff the law that is bad." Da, da, da. Oh, good man. He 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 sat down with somebody who met him where he was at, yeah. who understood where he was at, yeah. who had been there. He did a, he, he gave him simple advice. You and, know what I mean? But he started off telling him about this story about yeah. him and Coke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. you like you didn't want to tap that. <laughs> I didn't want to tap that. Yeah. So so I thought that was so important because he started off meeting him where he's at. We always talk about that, yeah. yep. and then. He helped guide him where he needed to guide him, mm. where he needs to be guided without even knowing it. So then he gets in line for prayer and he's like, I think I know. And then he's mm. making prayer and, and then it feels right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you're saying. Mm, okay, boom. And he goes into prayer and he feels. And if you notice, um, and everything, remember in film, everything is pre-intentional, except if it's Game of Thrones and there's like Starbucks cups and water bottles and stuff, right? Um, That's he, marketing. He left, he left the uh, the cleaning supplies where he's praying, and they show that. And I think mm, what you see, what you see in that moment is that he really was clean. Mm. He really, and and if you remember, he made really good wudu too. Yeah, he did, took his time. So he socks the off, toes. got in between the toes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He he cleaned up after himself, right? So like he really, really was trying, and you could see that that sense of relief in him. And I I implore all of us to try that. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like obviously sometimes you gotta hurry up, make boo, yeah. but every now and then, when when you really are feeling it, because not everybody's gonna pray the same, not everybody's gonna mm-hmm. get the same feels from prayer, right? Really try and take your time. Really try and get that like feel. The we do right cleansing your 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 mental and your physical for a law mm-hmm. and when you really try and make prayer slow it down just a little bit and really feel it it is nice and sometimes you don't feel anything let's mm-hmm. let's be real here sometimes mm-hmm. you're just like all right i just said the prayer but i told you this ramadan this past ramadan I, that's why i try to focus on. i try to focus on the quality of my prayer like where am i praying at what am i asking for in my duas like really putting that time in and bro like most of majority of my prayers i really felt that presence there mm, you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and i feel like those blessings that that came over from those those specific duas or specific prayers has rolled over into now like okay. I'm, I'm feeling i'm feeling the effects of all the work that i put in to make the sense serious of duas mm-hmm. you understand yeah. what i'm saying buddy you understand. Right. You understand. <laughs> you understand what you, you put out. What you all the good that you put out is coming back. No, but I like. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of blessings in this episode because, like you said, if it you know if this helps you think that way, or if it's mm-hmm. helping you have more you know quote unquote a chashur or focus while you're praying, like that's the whole point. But like I was saying, it was a mindset shift. You know, he went from mm-hmm. like being scattered brain to now when he uh, you know approached a prayer this time. Like you said, he was yeah. narrow minded. He was calm. He was collected. He was cool and ready to go. So, mm, I like good that. stuff. I like that thing. This next episode was where this is episode four. Yeah, this one was a pretty. Uh, this this was a different. So it's a different episode that uh, maybe I couldn't relate to all the way. Some parts I did, some parts that I didn't. But that, that, what I liked about this is that for uh, you and I, right? Yeah. We had very different experiences. This episode is specifically about nine eleven. I th- believe he was. Um, About like 12 years old around the time, 12, 13. Yeah, he looked like he was like 12, 13, I believe. He was yeah. like 6th or 7th grade, right? What's interesting about this is that there was experience that I could directly relate to, and there was ones that you could relate to. Mm-hmm. And Yeah, very true. And true. what was interesting was that he, re- like, in the fourth episode, and I kept thinking why. I was like, why? 
why for the fourth episode did he go here? Mm. Okay. You know? Why why did he go to this place where he's at in his this vulnerable time in his life? Vulnerable time for many Muslim lives. Place it here. Mm. He could have put this episode episode five. Mm-hmm. Because think about that in Ramadan or the beginning of Ramadan, supposed to be the first or maybe the first day, right? They could have did, you know, the, the Ramadan episode. But they didn't. No. So he, he put this episode in. I just think like that, right? Like, why? And I think it was really to kind of center us into getting to know Rami a little bit better. Okay. Like, to be able to, for us as young Muslims, right? Like, let's say you've never done drugs. You've never drank. you never had sex before. Yeah. You've never experienced any of those things, which is highly unlikely. And I'm not just talking about smoking, drinking, and all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying in general, like the family dynamic, like maybe you haven't experienced any of that other stuff, right? I'm saying like knowing somebody in your family that does it or just been around it, us or something, mm-hmm. just any of that stuff. This episode, if you're a young Muslim, you, you know this episode. Mm, yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah. this episode young Muslim here in America you know sure. how you felt on the day of 9-11 mm-hmm. you know how people looked at you differently during yep. 9-11 you know that you weren't getting advice in certain places because mm-hmm. of 9-11 mm-hmm. you know how people treated you especially kids right oh, man I, 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 leave bro cause this joins us this, this, episode, this episode is a lot dude I mean think about it. the way this episode started I mean it definitely goes into 9-11 towards I guess maybe towards the middle or tail end but in the beginning mm-hmm. It shows Rami being exposed to the internet. He's online and he's hitting the puberty stage, right? And mm. that's when the I am and chat and just <laughs> connect with people you've never seen before. So Crazy they were on world. there and they were talking about boobies, you know what I'm saying? So I thought that was just hilarious <laughs> because That's how you know everybody was stupid young. Yeah, bro. It's all about, but then uh they probably boobies. hit him with like uh, uh, like oh put this into your calculator flip it upside down see what it says you know <laughs> they were probably at that age uh but you know we don't know how old those people were that you know, he was talking to but he like he had like some rapport build up with those people mm-hmm. so those same people that you know put him onto that were the same people that had something to say about muslims during 9 11 then he asked him like hey do you think we're all terrorists. Like, yeah, they're, they're all behind it. But anyway, b- before we get into that, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely want to get sk- into like, you skipped a lot. I know, bro. right? Like, I'm, I'm bringing it back around. But going back into the puberty uh, part is like, I know that either growing up here or coming from a different country, parents take that stage of your life either really lax a daisy or pretty seriously. Like, we know we had FLE, so our parents. They left those conversations for our schools, which was not horrible. good. You That's know, horrible. What? I was in there like, yeah. Do you want to? You know keep your kid here in the FLE class my dad's like you're not getting out of any classes so, so, <laughs> so I'm like okay uh, that's interesting you say that though yeah. because even though I, I've i always had the ability to kind of talk to my parents even if they don't understand right mm-hmm. like oh like my dad will always ask me how was your day like what'd you learn today right mm-hmm. a lot of stuff I kept hidden because that was a very traumatic time for me yeah. as, as a kid like bro getting bullied people think you're a terrorist yeah. like dude I used to walk into a classroom and everybody be like, he's got a bomb. And then yeah. like, and like they got blown up or like run away. And like, what's funny is that the bullies never understand how impactful that shit is. So all that stuff is just hard to talk about. Puberty, being bullied, just going through yeah, those like your experience, years. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, just, yeah, yeah bro. Young. Like my man got exposed to basically porn at a young at age. A, at a young age. But a lot, most, most people I know get exposed to porn around like early middle school. That's, that's insane. But nobody talks about that. That is insane. It's, 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 it's insane, but, like, you get exposed as... And it, it really isn't that insane when you think about it because, like, around that age is when you start getting, like, curious about it. That's when you start... I mean, that's when you, you know, that's when you hit that yeah. age, your hormones start building, and then people are like, hey, 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 Google this website. And that's when the internet was coming up, too. You exactly. Know what I mean? so, so it was like, they're like, I can I can look at boobies like, for There's no more magazines, you know what, what I mean? Like, what? All I, all, all I need boobies. is phone. And now I got to put it in a calculator? <laughs> Bet. So, so... This episode was multifaceted. It obviously hit on 9-11 a little bit more. Yeah. It, you see the relationships of the friends that he was hanging around change. Mm-hmm. But then you realize that they were never really his friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they sure. were never his friends. Yeah. The craziest part was when his mom was like, we're going to give you a walkie-talkie. Exactly. That was. And then, like, as 9-11 is happening, right? At first, at first, you don't know what's happening. No. He goes into the bathroom, and then you're like, 
it, it's just weird. Like the vibe, it was weird. And mm -hmm. even you could feel that awkwardness. He comes out and the teacher's in the bathroom and he's like crying. And he's like, go, go, just go to your classroom. Yeah. And then you realize what happened. Yeah. And you realize at the same time he's realizing what's happening. And then his mom hits him up on the walkie talkie. I know. And it's like, she's speaking Arabic. And so people start freaking out. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at him like everybody goes quiet. And mm -hmm. they're like, Oh, shit. You know, like, snap. oh, are you a terrorist? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe you didn't have to relate to that mm -hmm. so much because of school no. you went to. But yeah, I, no. I went through that. That's, that joins, it, that's a very lonely feeling. That's a very lonely feeling. Because you're misrepresented, you know, and this is all new. This, this is new for everybody. So because mm -hmm. it's new, mm -hmm. they really don't even know about Islam like that anyway. So you were automatically kind of like glued to that opinion of being a terrorist, you know, and mm -hmm. because this is new to them. They were gonna believe whatever they heard, right? So that really sucked, cause like, damn, like I didn't even get a chance to kind of show you what I'm really about, and you you lost friends. Like, think about it, you lost friends, you could have lost teachers, you could have lost different opportunities just cause you were Muslim at the time. It's mm -hmm. like that's interesting, you know what yeah. I mean? Like that's a lot for a young kid to even understand. Then you go home and you see how your parents are acting, you see that your parents aren't even, you know, doing things different. Like in the show. The father had to put up in you know an American flag, which he never had, but just to show that he was American, you know. Yeah, he's like, I love have, this country. So I love this country, which I'm sure he does, and you know, and forever will, just like we do as immigrants. We we love the United States, you know. Mm -hmm. So something bad happened to our country here, and we be happy about it, or we just laugh like that's not. It's well, not real. Well, you know, Imam, uh, Brother Hassan Shibley said around the, the time of 9-11, Muslims became extremely apologetic. They tried to overcompensate. So, yeah, overcompensating for what happened, even though we didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those instances where I look and it's like, oh, no, we're, we're good. We're, we're like you guys. We're like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the, be you know, the best way to be like, no, nah, that's not us yeah. is to just not, you know let that i'm not gonna say not let it phase you but like don't try and show like oh we don't feel guilty mm. you know what i'm saying like that's just that's crazy what, what, what do you mean about like 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 feeling guilty like you can feel bad about it right because muslims died in 9 11 too mm. but in that instance, his dad was trying to overcompensate and be like, oh, like, we didn't do anything. Like, we're with you. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you know how people say if you're not guilty, then why are you trying to, like, cover stuff up? Mm. That it was one of those instances. It was one of those things where I was like, I get where he's trying to come from, but nah. It, it was something new for him. It was something new, new for the dad, too. Think about it. First generation, like, what do you do at that time? Because when, when you come to this country... Your goal is to establish something for your family and really just be un under the radar. So when the light is shined upon you and your community, what do you do? You try to just blend in and just try to be like everybody else. So I think they mm -hmm. felt like overcompensating was the only choice because maybe they're like, this is not my country. Because a lot of people, I'm sure this was like the first time they've ever experienced something like this. But uh, It was for my family, you know, so mm -hmm. we just did not know what to do. Mm, except mm. show that hey we're also citizens of this country too we are also american you know mm. so mm. overall just a lot yeah so i'm glad he went to, I'm i, glad I he think went to i think that. at the end though this is something that we've all kind of as young men we've dealt with was mm -hmm. he dealt with that stress yeah with masturbation and oh. it was <laughs> and it was it was crazy it was mm -hmm. crazy because i was like Yo, like my man literally looked at like a magazine cover and was like he just closed his eyes and mm -hmm. bada boom bada bing, right? Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. he he freaking he choked the chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so so like you're 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 looking at this and you're like, I know this. Like this is crazy yeah. because all this stuff is happening around that the time for him and you're like as a young Muslim male, you're like, bro, I understand this part. I understand this part of, like, the puberty. Like, mm -hmm. he he packaged a lot of things in one, but then it also helps you understand his character and be like, okay, now I see why he's he's kind of like this, and I see why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know see where like, that stems from. Yeah, you see why he's, he's, you see where he comes from in this secular society, you know what I'm saying, and why, he, in ways he may be lost. And not only that, you can see as people how we're influenced all the time. You know what I mean? Whether it's from family, friends, now it's through media, you know? So yeah, the funniest crazy. thing was like when 
they were uh, his friends or so-called friends was like, yeah, you know, Rami, what you do over the weekend? Did, did you do what we talked about? Like, yeah. So how was it? Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. How many times do it? Like six times. They were like, what? <laughs> so that kind of reminded me of you just saying stuff or doing stuff just to fit in. You know what I mean? Even though you may not have liked it because maybe that wasn't what you know he wanted to do. But he's like, damn, if I don't do this, then my friends are going to think that I'm a terrorist or I just or, don't or they're fit gonna in. they're going to think I'm a loser. They're going to think I'm a loser. And as a kid... You know, you didn't want to be a loser. Even now, I mean, I don't think you ever want to be a loser. But you know, yeah, obviously, you learn how to you learn. You learn how to be yourself. The problem, and because Rami is him and his sister, right? He's the oldest. Mm -hmm. As the oldest, you have nobody to look up to to help you with those things. Good point. And Mm -hmm. it's like to kick you game or or, or the brother, exactly, exactly. uncle, sister. And like he's listening to these white kids tell him. Oh, like this is how it is. Yeah, and that's why it's good to have Muslim friends. That's what I put down here. Good to have Muslim friends as I mean, well. I think it's about having. I think you just need kids from all different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Because okay, you have a, a friend that's a Muslim, right? For the nine cool. eleven experience, probably. For the nine eleven, yeah, definitely for yeah. the nine eleven experience. I'm yeah. speaking more so on like just like the jacking off one, right? Yeah, the puberty. With that, it's like, like they're like, oh, my brother said you can die if you do it too many times. Uh-huh. Okay, well your brother is in like high school yeah right? <laughs> yeah one and then two it's like we we when we're younger we listen to all those people that say and do bad things to us and we give them so much weight mm. we we give their opinion so much Preach, weight yeah, that, yeah so it goes back into the theme of peer pressure mm-hmm. and that's also a theme of this show that is like it's constant yeah it is constant it is it's very much constant. <laughs> very true so you want to go into episode five now? So episode five was uh, was it do do the Rami Don? Do, do the Rami Don? And and that episode was insane because we were watching it while it was Ramadan, you know, and Rami was ready to take this Ramadan serious, but his friends weren't, or just the people around him. So I think it's, it it reminded me of one of those times where it's like you're going to be on a different spiritual wave than the people around you. And mm-hmm. they're going to be on a different spiritual wave than you. And the, I feel like that goes, the ebbs and flows, right? And that's, yeah. there's going to be a time where you're like, you're hyped. There's times where I'm hyped. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. the goal is to keep encouraging each other. But some of his friends weren't really in that encouraging. But it's like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. real life. It's like, damn, dude, you're really taking this thing serious. You know, I remember before Ramadan, you and I were both taking prayer seriously. Even during Ramadan, we make sure we stay that way, you know? Mm-hmm. So some people just aren't on that wavelength, which is okay because they got to go out there. Di- everybody's at a different place. You know, so that, so that, so that, so that did show that aspect as mm-hmm. well. W- what I thought was funny, though, was, and you did this, <laughs> was he, he, he put so much intensity yes. into the yeah. Ramadan yeah. and yeah. he still was hitting these, these roadblocks, these obstacles. Mm-hmm. And, and I think what it shows is that Sometimes you just gotta do the simple stuff, bro. The basics. Like, he was like, "Oh my God, I need to go to every tar. We I need to. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't wake <laughs> me up for so hard. And, uh, like, he he was trying so hard to do every aspect right, and then, you know, at the end, well, let me let me let me not skip to the end, right? Matter of fact, no. Let me go to the end, and then I want to go back to the part where they're praying outside for the diner. Okay. Yeah. So so and then at the end, he messes up, and we're not gonna let's not ruin that part because yeah, exactly. you know that's what I'm saying let's, let's, let's leave this episode a bit of a mystery because yeah. I think this was such a good episode that has such a um different ending than mm. I expected that okay. I would I wouldn't want to like ruin that for <laughs> anybody that hasn't listened yet actually no we say it was spoilers alert <laughs> 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 screw, screw them wrap that thing <laughs> up so so like then you get to the end and you're like bruh yeah it's Ramadan. It's Ramadan, cuz. No, what? Bruh. Skirt. <laughs> wow. So, so, at the beginning, he's wearing the little thobe, and, yeah. and he's like, oh, my God, like, yo, why are you wearing this? And mm-hmm. he's he's trying to be all intense with it. And he's like, oh, like, I'm going to pray. I'm going to go here. I'm going to the mosque. Like, real intense. Boom, boom, boom. And I remember you got like that at one point. Yeah, and, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah. it's it's not sustainable. Yeah. It's like you said before. How do you how are you going to go to the mosque every single prayer, eat out iftar every time? Mm-hmm. You know, like you going to the up to the umpteenth power, <laughs> and you think you're going to be able to sustain that? Uh, take it up. You can't. You can't sustain that energy. You can't sustain doing that. So. 
so then you go through the episode and he's starting to weigh down a little bit. Yeah. Like, oh my God, oh my God. Ramadan struggles going through it. Mm -hmm. um, but then his friends finally hooked him up with Ahmed's cousin who was in yeah, town. Yeah, in town for that. And um, what, what do you think of what did you think of that conversation? About uh, her, I mean, her and him? Mm -hmm. Like, well, her, just her in general, like how that whole interaction went down. Because it, like, it was literally like he was in a job interview and that mm -hmm. joke was crazy. It, it was funny because it's like, you know, she had a, a bullet, you know, a, a bulletin board or just like a, bull, a list full of bullets of what she thought like her husband should be, you know? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like, you know, I feel like a lot of women or just a lot of people have that. But what she didn't show was like, more about herself and knowing what she liked you know it's like hey okay it was like a checklist like okay does he speak arabic boom does can he read the quran boom does he do mm -hmm. this boom mm -hmm. does he pray but it's like life doesn't work out as a checklist you know what i mean obviously you need to have your um your your non-negotiables what we talk about mm -hmm. but at the same time like you really need to get to know somebody and have like a conversation and go through some things with them to really figure out how they are if you go through a checklist you know sorry but you're gonna get finessed because a lot of people are just gonna <laughs> be like yeah i can do that yeah i can do that yeah i can do that yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, the yeah. person is like basically went on tour to find a husband like, all right cool this matches my quote-unquote list you know so i thought it was I thought it was real, but at the same time, it really showed that we need to kind of, like, do better when it comes to, like, picking a spouse. Because it looked like mm, Mommy was, like, mm. really, like, genuinely like, interested. Like, I really want to get to know you. You know what I mean? But she, she was, was just, like, like a checklist. Well, like, oh, you, you don't you, speak Arabic? You then. don't meet these golden standards, you know? So it's, like, uh, I can't even give you a chance. Well, it, well it, it also, like, when he started talking about, like, he was, like, you know, I, I want to go back to how I used to be before I had sex. Mm. And he's talking about how he wants to get back to being like childlike happy mm -hmm. and she's like i get it we all make mistakes <laughs> like so um where are you how many uh <laughs> how many sewers do you know Yo. <laughs> he said how many sewers do you know he said he was like you know the classic the classic she's like she's like i really no no so after after he like tells him the whole story she goes she's like i really like that you know like i like a man that can admit to his mistakes he was like i mean you know i got a lot of <laughs> He trying to play this movie, right, man? She was like, so, so, so then she goes, she goes, <laughs> we gotta be quiet. So then she goes, she goes, so how much of the Quran have you memorized? Uh, huh? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Suris, he was like, you know, you know the classic. The classic, but then everybody knows I was done after that. I was like, man, he thought he was picture perfect with that oh, line. Oh, man, bro. And then that she was like, so funny. okay. And then she was like, um, how much Arabic do you know? She was like, yeah, I don't know any Arabic. Oh. I read the Quran in English, okay, right. and oh. she clo and she closed the she note. She closed with like, yeah. I was know, like, I, I was like, shorty. Down. So, dude told you he been out here punishing joints, <laughs> and you you like, oh, I like your mistakes. But he says he can't speak Arabic, and you you just like, oh, this is done. It it, it shows that like it's not even like our priorities are messed up. It's that we put so much emphasis on people having to be outwardly yeah outside. perfect that that like we. We look at that and say, "Oh, this right here is what you know." No, 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 that's that's the line. Yeah, but not only that, that kind of shows me that you know she was so ready to get married that she didn't see those red flags. You know what I mean? Like all the stuff that she said before. Like I feel like those were more red flags than the Arabic thing at the that end. He doesn't speak Arabic. You yeah, know exactly. You know, so those were definitely at least for me like but bigger points. Is, but is that a red flag though? Like maybe, maybe. It could have been good between them, mm. but she looked at like, oh, you don't speak Arabic as the the bouncer. That's the yeah, the, like, that's the that line. was the that was oh, the oh you did coke. It's all good, baby. Oh, you don't crack. It's all good, baby. Another no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. And then oh, you don't read Arabic. Oh nah, you can't oh, get in. So like whoa, what? Ain't nothing to cut that. Oh. So so, it really shows, like you said, like where the standards are when it comes to dating and finding a spouse. It's mm -hmm. just it's completely off. We don't look at where someone's iman is and where the taqwa is. We yeah. kind of look at the outward. We look at the outward sense of like what they are and mm -hmm. how Muslim are you really? Oh, you don't speak Arabic, then that's like ten Muslim yes. points. <laughs> that's freaking nuts. This is the Muslim bar. <laughs> so, so during this Ramadan, he's mm -hmm. he's he's really trying. Like, and even his family, it was kind of like we were saying before this peer pressure of, bro. Like, why are you trying to be like super Muslim? Mm. Right? Like, 
stop like stop trying to be super muscle all right this family's just trying it, to catch the shows the ramadan shows yeah like they're just fun. trying to watch tv and you see that it's like a regular muslim home yeah. like your family they just watch tv or the woman don't be praying you don't see your dad because he's just working all yeah. the time and and all the while you're really trying to figure out where you are spiritually mm-hmm. and ramadan is a very confusing time for a lot of people i know this past one was like holy crap oh my goodness yeah how about a shoe yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Because you're like, where am I? Yeah. Where am I? Like, I'm trying not to make these mistakes. Yeah. But, like, they're they're right here on me. And I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to fast. I'm trying to, you know, get as many blessings as possible during this month specifically. And then you're like, you mess up anyways. And so now you're like, <laughs> like holy crap, I'm not, this is the one month I'm not supposed to mess the up. One but month. then I thought about it. Because I was in a similar situation to him where I, like, yeah. I messed up, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, Damn, maybe this is the best month to actually do that because mm-hmm. I get the most blessings and okay. the most, you know, saying Allah's That's my a, and my duas are interesting, sincere because I'm like, oh Allah, please forgive me, like not during. And you're putting this. in the work. You feel me? When, when when you're making mistakes, it shows that you make you have activity. You right. The less mistakes you mean, either means you are actually perfect. You really got it down, or you're just trying more. You feel me? Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Um, or or that you are actually out there trying things you're not out there trying to I mean me. if you like if you aren't making mistakes right that what that means is that you're, you're not, not trying you're not pushing yourself yeah you're not pushing yourself to be better because yes. how can you how can you be like oh i understand this about the world when you haven't experienced mm. the world mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you got to go out there and Bridge, do a bunch of drugs and stuff but like you do have to understand where you fit within certain scenes and certain environments and so on and so forth you know what i'm saying like right. i know i can hang around people that are doing you know x y and z but it doesn't mean that i have to do x y and z you know Sheesh, what i mean yeah yeah like that's why i met in my iman my uh ibada like throughout the day and like what i'm doing it's like yo I, i'm good mm. like i know i'm straight yeah but if i'm here i can possibly help somebody that that's kind of where my head goes with it right um the the, the beginning when they're they're praying outside the diner Mm-hmm. And yeah, his friend like asked him to make prayer for him. This is his mom. Then, yeah, yeah, for his for his mom. And he does this like this oh Jackie. Yeah. Allah Allah yeah. Jackie. And it, and and I was weirded out by that because I, I was, was like too, at first. I was like, dude, why did you just like explain to him like yo, this is how we make prayer is or just make prayer aloud for him. Like yeah. just make Fajr twice. Mm-hmm. Just to, to to satisfy him. And maybe maybe I'm wrong in what I'm saying. Okay. So you know, we'll listen. Yeah. But to to bring comfort to your friend whose mom is on her deathbed, pray like you normally would. Pray just pray Fajr out loud and and just tell him like, yo, just sit. This is how it works. Mm-hmm. I got you. Right. I'll definitely make prayer for your mom right now on the spot. Yes. Rami is a very awkward and very much a pushover at times uh-huh. i think he's very much a pushover he he's a comes to peer pressure way too easily mm. no i mean I, with that part too i was just like i was saying the same thing i was like why didn't he just do like a regular dua but in english you know what i mean just he could legitly say pray for my mom instead of doing like a full prayer he could legitly just had his his hands up you know what i mean kind of pray for his mom no because like, remember know? he was like no 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 i want you to do like the the, the full did. the full oh, yeah, thing i want you to do the, the full thing he did, he did. I, I, want, I want the real blessings mm-hmm. But like you said, he could just explain to him. But then, so for doing that part, like when he did that, I was just like, I, I didn't think he had to do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like he could have just been himself. Maybe there was something that he was trying to show that I missed. But, you know, I wish, like you said, he would just kept the standard, kept the protocol. Because mm-hmm. at that point, it's like, hey, no, as Muslims, like this is just how we pray. And then explain to the guy. But I guess he was trying what, to do something what, different. What I thought was really dope about that, though, right? Yeah. And I, this just popped in my head. Is yeah. we were in the same situation where now you're you know people you know know that you're Muslim, mm-hmm. and they look at Muslims as though we are closer to God. Because yeah. why why else would he ask him and not like someone else? Like mm-hmm. and it's obviously it's a show they they curate where what where when or and how things and, happen or just him talking god himself for what he exactly. believes in. What he was like, I can't do it, but you can do it for you me can because do you're it. Muslim. Yeah. Hmm. So off the rip, off people the rip. people know that Muslims have a very uh, a unique spiritual connection with the law, with mm-hmm. God, the One, the Creator. I I mean. Right, and and for him to just say, you know what, like do that thing for me, like I need you to do this, please do this thing for me. Yes, right. 
was was so eye opening. And then and then it comes to where we were or are, mm-hmm. where now you have this bit of responsibility where you're like, yo, I gotta kind of, I gotta put the weight of this on my shoulders because. I can't be out here doing reckless stuff. And he's like, but like, dude, all Muslims do that. Oh, it, goes yeah, back, yeah. it goes back to episode four. Mm. It goes back to episode four where you're like, so are you a terrorist? Yeah. Like, mm. what, what do Muslims do? So like when in this country specifically, people are very ignorant about Muslims, right? Yeah, they are. So if we don't give people the right idea and perception of what a Muslim is and who they are, then... How they even learn? Exactly. They don't learn from Muslims. Exactly. You know I mean? or, or, or if you're always doing bad stuff and they see you do it and they're like, oh, I thought Muslims couldn't drink. Mm, mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Or I thought... Uh, yeah. And, 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 it's hard, and it's hard for people to understand, like, you separate me from the religion and my actions and my bad deeds and whatever from what we're supposed to do. And I, you know, I think in the past, like, I've had to make that clear with certain things like, hey, look, like... I am Jabril and I'm going to make mistakes. And Islam is yeah, Islam, Islam is perfect. I'm mm-hmm, not perfect. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Exactly, so, exactly, exactly. Nah, nah, I, I do like that point that you bring up because it's also very clear that that's right. You know what I mean? And I love that because people just like, you know, even for me, for I work, when I'm about to go to prayers, you know, they know I'm going to the measure, like, oh man, pray for me, you know? Like, people say that. Mm-hmm. During Ramadan, oh man, you're fasting. I heard that your blessings are increased. Please, you know, just shoot a few my way, you know. They're mm-hmm. learning. That's Dawa, you feel me? Mm-hmm. That's dialogue being mm-hmm. created. So he missed the opportunity. He yeah. he missed the opportunity because he was a little punk joint. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be a don't be a punk beat. Punk beat, punk beat, punk Um he missed the opportunity, right? But again, this guy is a seesaw. In one hand he's trying to do right, then next he does something like wow conflicted very, he's very yeah. conflicted but i guess you know to kind of wrap this up because we didn't want to give too much of that exactly episode, right? no, no, no. that episode was very good we want you guys to watch that one specifically um, yeah he's conflicted and i think the experience that he has within that episode mm-hmm. within the the show as a whole is very real to what we experience on the day to day being being conflicted between your your know-how of today's world and the culture of today's world and the heritage that you've grown up with, mm-hmm. right? Succumbing to your vices and That's a st- lot of clashing. <laughs> still trying to maintain your religi- religiosity, Religious, your man, yeah. yep. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and acting out being a Muslim. Like, how, how do we go through our lives and never really help those who don't understand us understand us? Mm. And there's plenty of people who do that. And Rami... At least open the door for that conversation. Exactly. Like no. Rami, Rami, the character Rami, is one of those people who are just like, I'm Muslim and I'm going to try and be the best I can be. But he doesn't see any sense of responsibility. Like we were talking about how hijab, you know, mm. uh, uh, Maria, not, Maria Drissi yeah. was like, like, this is what it's for. And she put it out there for people to understand because not everybody's Muslim on her platform. Right. Mm. She put it out there for people to understand. Like, yo, like this is the way this is why I don't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But Rami, his character is more like I'm just trying to focus on what I do that I so I can be good. I, I'm in no place to actually present to someone else. But mm. like my pops always said, no matter where you go. Someone is always watching. Always, always, always. So, mm-hmm. um, at that, I think there, man, if what we said, you know, is not enough for you to go out there and watch the show, we have not did our job. And if you listen <laughs> to this whole episode and didn't watch the show, first, thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but second, like, go watch the show. It's very him. good. Um, support our Muslim brother because I think what he's doing with this show and with his HBO specials, he's doing something that, one, is unprecedented. Two is completely taboo. Very. Like nobody's doing this except for us. Mm-hmm. We ain't here, baby. Mm-hmm. He, he's he's doing something that we personally believe in. If you guys like our content, then I think you guys really get down with what he's doing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Mo, how can how can how can they find us? Yeah. So make sure that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Let's 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 stop. What are we doing? Stretch your arms up. Ah. <sighs> Breathe. That was a lot. That was a, that was an out. That was like an out. Two hours of him. Look, this show is amazing. All right, we're, we're we're obviously trying to be a little bit quiet because like it's, it's a little bit late. You know how we guys, you guys, you know how we do out here. Um, all right, so so Mo, 
We're going to wrap this thing up. We're going to do this with energy. Let's get it. You ready? Pump it. Pump it. Pump it. Pump it. Pump it up. How can they find us? Where we at? How can they find us? Where we at? Twitter. Insta. At Young and Muslim. That's Young and Muslim. and Muslim. Young and Muslim. Find us on Twitter, Instagram. Like us up on Facebook. You know how it be. Also, if you want to see us with these moves and vibing, watch us on YouTube. The Young and Muslim Podcast. Comment. Subscribe. And also check us out on where you listen to your By the Harlem Shade. podcast. <laughs> iTunes, Apple Podcasts, hey. SoundCloud, hey. Google Play, hey. Castbox. Please let us know how we're doing. Drop a comment, drop a smile. No, more importantly, guys, please Reviews. share this with yes, Rami. Yes, we want yes, him yes. to see this episode get because your boys him. want to, you know, we're trying to get in the rooms. We're trying to get with the right people in our in our in our circle, inner circles and stuff like that. I'm saying we about to be besties, but we could be besties because my man's cool. We cool. We want him to listen to our mixtape. And if you don't like it, you can throw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hustle and flow. So so look. Share this Twitter, Instagram, share with Rami, At tag Rami. Rami. Yusuf. Just like, yo, Rami, Yusuf. Rami Hit him up. put, yo, these dudes made a whole, like, episode just up. on Hit your podcast. Up. I ain't even trying oh. to hit him up. So, so, do it, do it, you know what I'm saying, let's go. Blah, blah, blah. So, all right, so, for the last two hours, Shalom, it almost seems, Shalom. my God, this is a classic. Shalom. For the last two hours, you guys have been listening to the Young and Muslim Podcast. My name is Jibril Salam. This is Muhammad Hassan. And we greet you with the greens of peace. As-salamu alaykum. Wrap it up. Goodbye. Goodbye, bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. We have like some, some bonus features. Mm-hmm. All right. Gotta go. Here's the bathroom. Peace.